Hey team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Bolan. Today, I've got to tell you, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun and uh, we're going to have a great chat. We have three generations of unit still photographers, starting with the trailblazer himself, David James, who uh, I have to admit, I followed his work as a young fella and there's been lots of films that he shot, which uh, I wish that I had have been involved in. We've actually been able to be on film set together on uh, Mission Impossible 3, which is quite a rarity. But we also have someone else here who's been on many, many more film sets with David. And uh, she's an incredible photographer in her own right. And uh, she should be. She's uh, had some of the best training that any photographer could possibly get. And uh, I'd like to welcome Chia Bella James, David's daughter, who's been a set rat since uh, she was a baby. And now she's uh, working on a massive films in her own right. And I'm a bit of a fan of her work too. So I'm going to bring in the team. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this right. I'm going to bring in Chia first. Hey, Chia, how are you doing? Hello. I'm ready I gotta to put my glasses David. on. <laughs> yeah, ready to, oh yeah, it's not a David roast. Jeez. <laughs> um, or, this is, or, this I'm gonna, is I'm gonna, the fun of being with him. <laughs> I, I know we him. could just we we oh he's just left. <laughs> we could just leave him. We we could just do the interview you and me, and we could just leave David and like you know leave it as a gag. It's like yeah, you're retired oh. now, buddy. This is the new guards in. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't have me there to help him with the iPad, I guess. <laughs> oh. I'm going, to, I'm going to bring him in because it's uh, okay. because otherwise you're in you're there in you. trouble. You'll be written out. <laughs> hey, David. Uh, hi. What's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Hey, um, just, I, I don't have the hit the earbuds in. Oh, I've got hearing aids. <laughs> oh, oh, so you like you like the bionic man. If I don't like what you're talking about, I can switch to music. So I'm walking around, you you'll know, know. know. He'll just start I'm nodding. Yeah, when we get to um, when we get to Chia Bella's uh, awesome June images, which uh, I'm sure you're a bit jealous about. Yeah. I am. I tell you, they're, I am they're jealous great. about this... them. Something I never ever want to stop looking at them. Yeah. Me too. They're, I um... want to go back and do it all over again. Right. Well, you've got a release soon, right? I think it's supposed to come out in October. I mean, it, it like can't come soon enough. Oh, I, can't I, th wait. I think. Um, I think I've got like four or five films coming out between September and October. Everything kind of got stalled. Oh my god! All at once. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of it's fun. crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? So, as per the intro. Father daughter team, and I don't know of a. I mean, like I know father daughter, father son teams in other areas of the film industry, but I don't think there is another one in stills, right? I think Not that so. I'm aware of. No. Yeah, I don't. It's rare that you even get two unit photographers on the same job, let alone yep. related. <laughs> yeah, totally. I come from a newspaper family, so. Uh, we t you and I have had this discussion before, Chia, that um, it's hard work coming from um, it's hard work coming from a family that that has. I mean, your dad's really been a, a trailblazer for all, all us now photographers, so to speak. You know, I mean, the rates and the style and the you know the way that that things are done on a film set um, really do come from that man in the middle there, and and. I don't mean it lightly. I don't know what the word is f for him, for me, but um, but we do we do owe David a, a great great deal. And you know, there's a there's a there's a few other photographers that are sort of around that caliber. But um, David's had that long longevity and and uh, still out there. I'm, I'm sure he'd still pick up the cameras if someone gave him a good project, right? Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Got, they're, they're in the cover behind me. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I've, I've retired from unit photography. I've not retired from life or photography. Um, and uh, you know, I'm available. I will do anything like that. But you can once a photographer, you're always a photographer. You never give it up. Yeah. Um, 
through. Because your, your, your passion with photography started as a, as a very young fellow. You knew, like, in, when you were eight or nine, right? That this I is knew I when I was nine years old and MG came and filmed outside my school in England and I played hooky from classes. <laughs> they, they thought I had a medical problem because I kept going to the toilet. But I would skip out. <laughs> I was in the church school and I would skip out into the churchyard next door, hide behind gravestones and watch them shoot. And the only the only oh. guy after that, my second trip out there, the only guy I really watched, was watching was, was the still photographer with two rolly flexes around his neck. His name is Johnny J, and I decided then that's where I was going to be. And at sixteen, oh, I quit really... school. I, I managed to, out of a fluke, got into MGM Studios, which is whose name was he? And the first photographer I met there was that guy who was on the set, a guy named Johnny J. Who was uh, no way? Yeah, it was his first guy, and he took me under the wing. He mentored me. He would take me on weekends. He'd take me on the set and play Roddy Flex and say, "Go shoot." And then he took me on a film with him called Moon Spinners for Disney. He took me out to Crete as a second unit photographer. How old were you then? Well, then I was about um, 20, 21. Oh, that's I was, incredible. No, I was 18 when I left MGM. So I was about, about no, I was 18 and a half, so I was probably about 19 and a half, 20. Wow. So, wow. So, but there, there was a long, there, long there was one, there was a magical moment when we, we were in a little village and I was photographing Hayley Mills, who was a, a kid then, um, playing Hayley Mills and Walt Disney playing checkers with locals right outside the bar and disney said to me he said wait here have your camera ready and he disappeared he came down a, a, a track between two farm walls leading a pig on a leash and i got pictures of him coming down this track I'm going to hook into some photos in a minute, but you're known for your uh presentation to uh directors and producers with with your with your prints and printers and um you know we get this a lot don't we that, that young photographers don't want to do their own edits and um expect to get paid for this that and the other thing and you know complain about it but uh it's an important thing to to establish your relationship and your continue work. it isn't it yeah yeah then honest, honestly if you're not interested in what you've shot you shouldn't be doing the job yeah, agreed. Ooh, that is no, it's serious. Best. It's serious. You shouldn't be doing the job because it's like how can how can you not be? It's like here's a, you're an artist. You have a canvas. Your paint. Here's the brushes, and you walk away and leave it. Why? Yeah, agreed. You know, you paint the picture and you finish it, and you finish it to your satisfaction. So say the fuck off. You do the same thing. You yeah. Get, yeah. You. It's not just pressing the button is your interpretation of it afterwards of how you saw it and you shot it does not necessarily mean that is in the camera you see it i see something ah oh, i got this image and i know exactly what i'm gonna do with it it's, it's like a, yeah. it's, you're creating an image you're creating a photograph a painting I love that i love that process afterwards it's like you know you know that you've exactly that you've got the plans to the building and um and then you then you get to build it later and and put in all the landscaping and stuff like that i don't you know yeah. i don't do huge edits but but th just that little pop is um is really important i think yeah jason's yeah, yeah, I've been mentoring quite a few and i've, I've mm -hmm. taught i did main media course i lectured in places it's amazing how many young people do not <laughs> know what the word photograph means. When it's photograph, it's photograph. Well, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but photograph has a meaning. I think it's from ancient Greek. Photo is light, and graph is a drawing, right? So you're making a drawing in light. That's what a photograph yep. is. And if you can't see it to the end of that piece of art, then you honestly shouldn't be in the business. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's um, and Chia and I've spoken about this before about about light is like I don't 
pay much attention to it and and I get in trouble sometimes because I say, you know, I brush the light off. But then when you get into it, it's like as photographers, we shouldn't, we should just know where the light is. We shouldn't have to stress ourselves out over it. It's, you know, there's other things import, more important to, um, to, to put everything together. And, you know, light is something which as photographers really should be something that just comes naturally, right? Yeah. I think all my life, I have sat in restaurants and pubs and places um, and looked at people. And I don't just look at the people, I look at how light is on them. There's, there's an image I have here that I can see when I was doing um, Superman Returns. I went up the King's Cross area on a Sunday afternoon and there was a bar on the corner with the shutters and the windows wide open, people sitting in the window. I went in and had a beer, and there was an old guy sitting at the back against the wall. Heaven knows how old he was, but he's looked like a little man, right? He's sitting there with his beer. He's got a few teeth, and he's grinning ear to ear. Lots of lines of being outside too much on his face. I wish I'd gone out to him and said, can I take a picture? But I did I that picture. It's up in here. You know, and it's yeah. a... Those images and their light was so beautiful on it. It was bounced off the floor. You know, like, I know the area that you're talking about. Yeah, and then again, when you're constructing lighting, I did a movie. Alex Thompson was the DP, and we had a Russian director. I remember his name now. It was Duet for one of the movie. But we, Alex had lit this whole bedroom, and the director walked in and said, "No." Not like this. So he pulled all the lighting out and he put huge lights through the window, like sunlight. Got pieces of baking foil and pieces of card and laid them on the floor. Let the sun bounce back around the room. It was beautiful. It was such great yeah. lighting. But it's all about knowing the light comes in here, it bounces there, it goes there, it goes there. You know, and it, it's, I remember it's, one of the first things you taught me. Yeah, you'd make me. We'd look at things, and he'd, you know, as it in a pub or a restaurant, <laughs> always <laughs> with his food. Um, and and I remember you saying to me, you know, we would kind of analyze something, and we would talk about the shafts of light, and but you'd let me point it out. And I remember you saying to me that once you start seeing things in terms of the light. You're looking at it like a photographer, right? Exactly. And that was kind of my like, okay. Start yeah, once you see it, light. <laughs> there, there's a, a Latin saying, "Especio lux lucis," which is "behold the light." And I think that's um, it's there we go. it's it's really it, it is so true. And it's like you know, I mean, like, and how lucky are we too with some of the DPs that we get to work with, oh. and, and learn and and just to see what they see. Um, it's just an absolute treat. Oh, my, On Dune, my... I would literally come to set early and I would sit, cameras down, and I would sit in the corner and I would just watch Greg Fraser like that. Yeah. It yes. was like, as you said, it was like watching right. somebody paint a canvas. Right. Incredible. I got, I got my, my first real lesson in lighting. You remember Freddie Young? So Freddie Young, you, you, you're both too young for it. So Freddie <laughs> well, Young I know the story like, that's coming. <laughs> he, he, so Freddie Young was, he was David Lean's DP. He did uh, Dr. Chivago, all those huge David Lean movies. And I was 16 and I was working in the lab at MGM and they used, because I had the voice of the low and I had their ear, they knew that I was so keen, right, into everything. They would put me out as an assistant to any special photographers coming in. So we had, in those days, we had a lot of guys from Life and Look Magazine. And there's one guy named Bob Elkins, who I assisted quite a few times. He was doing a film called In of the Six Happiness with um, Ingrid Bergman. Right? And they were shooting on, they had built this, Asian village on the back set. And I went up there 
as Bob's assistant, and I was sitting on the wall and was watching them lighting everything with arc lights and the old brutes. And they put orange filters on the brutes. And we were on a, a cold English winter's afternoon. So I said to, to Bob, I said, why do they put those orange filters? In? I knew nothing, right? It was a raw. So he said, oh, come with me. And he said, Freddie, this man's got a question. And Freddie is sitting under the cameras right above his head. He's sitting in his director type chair with the camera above his head. And he said, what do you want? And I said, I just want to know about the filters in front of the lights. He said, get this young man a chair. So I was sitting next to a great Sir Freddie Young, and he had all the lights, everything, right? He said, okay, guys, take the filters away. Now start lighting the brutes from the back of the set forward. And every light that came on, he just told me why, what it was doing, how it was doing, right? So he got to the full He said, okay, guys, from the back, put the filters back. And he put the filter, and he was telling me about the tone, the range, and the where the film was set, which country it was in, this has to have this warm light. And he said, I, I promise you, he spent like 40 minutes to light the set. And that was the most incredible. These days, you get out of here. <laughs> you won't, you won't go yeah, you wouldn't get that now. But, but those days. Oh, my I mean, gosh. Those days, people were into teaching you the craft so that you could carry on the craft. You know, now that, you go figure it out yourself. That is a very good point, actually. And I can, I, I was, I was visualizing, I was sitting in the chair, actually, while you were telling that story. <laughs> and I could, I could see it. I could, I was picturing this, uh, this massive set with all these lights coming on and the different layers and the, and then, and then when dropping the filters in and just watching it all mixed together. So, um, that was, that was a great visual. Uh, it was an How many awesome, times you hit? Awesome. Sorry? Oh, no, I was just going to uh, say to Chia um, how many times she said that story because it's it's a great story. Uh, I know the story well. I, I, you know, as you said, that doesn't really happen these days. I I feel like the only version I've ever had of that was when, when you know, DJ and I started actually properly working together um, in my grown-up years as opposed to yeah. <laughs> my teenage years. And, uh, and, and before that, I, I kind of, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd grown up learning the unit side, but I really didn't understand the lighting side. I, I didn't feel like I could do it. I, you know, I had the admiration for everybody else and for, for watching David on these special shoots and, and kind of going, I don't, how do you see that? How do you know? And uh, we were on Star Wars at the time and we borrowed a creature's head <laughs> from, the creatures department and they uh we stuck it on a stool and well you started with one light and he yeah. took this one light and just said show me different ways of using that light with this creature's head and you know left me to kind of figure it out but then guiding and saying oh, okay now uh how are you gonna light the other side without another light and sort of teaching the bounce and the you know, and, and learning how to do it with this, I, I can always picture this creature's head as ridiculous ears, but, you know, we we ended up with like 12 different lighting setups just with one light. And that was that was my version, but it, yeah, not to the point where you watch somebody, you know, shutting off yeah, all the but, lights for you, some but, famous but director true, but, giving you the set. <laughs> well, that, and that came the lesson I had when, when I was 16 and I was just joined MGM and I said to a head photographer, a guy named Davis Bolton, who eventually became a DP himself. I said, Davis, said, how do you like women? And he <laughs> said, Nita, as we said, which one? And I said, oh, <laughs> he I said, go. they're all different. He said, yep. you know, and, and these days, the way they use the big soft box, honestly, mm. so much of it looks same. But yeah, he put, he locked me in the studio, where the, a, a female figure on the stand, just ahead, and he gave me one light. And he gave me a rolly flex with 12 frames. He said, mm -hmm. I want 12 different setups with one light. And he locked me in the studio. said, I'll come back for you later. Think about it. <laughs> it was awesome. That is it was such a great so lesson. Cool. One of the beefs I have about a lot of lighting now, especially magazine stuff, like which is doing now is brilliant. 
because she has learned this thing that every, everything's different, right? So you can't shoot sure. it. So you go and look at, go in the airport next time and look at the magazine, right? Look at, especially the women's magazines, all the headshots looking at you, they all look the same. None of yeah. them look different. I think that's changing. I hope so. I think that's shifting. I hope so. I feel like the commercial artists these days are a little more creative, a little bit more distinct. I, it's slowly, but I, I, I feel like the, the artists that I'm starting to see emerging, and I, I don't know if that's because of some of the cultural changes that are happening, um, but I feel like that kind of plastic looking, yeah, fully photoshopped. <laughs> Next, next, Flat, time, I'm in, next time I'm in an airport, go straight to the bar, I will go and look at the magazine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's a lot of dates and distraction there. Right. No, but, but a lot of that too is I don't know whether that's um, necessarily the photographer's fault. I mean, we all know right. from our work that we submit that sometimes it can look completely different to how we shot it. And sometimes that's a good thing. Um, you know, I love seeing, you know, especially what people like Andy Park do to, to my images for posters and stuff like that. But, um, you know, especially down the magazine path, you know, that might be a little bit of them copying each other too. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard one. It's, you know, I did a, a shoot last week of an, of an older actress who's just absolutely adorable, but I had to match the light of two other people that um, that were photographed prior to her, but the light just didn't work. And I'm like, so I'm on the phone to the client, it's like, listen, I can't, you know, it's not, it's it's disrespectful to her. It's, it's I have to light her and I have to, I have to tweak it. I can go somewhere in between what you've given me, but I really, you know, I really need to make it about her because she's going to hate it if I don't. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful power that we hold in a way that, you know, as photographers who care, we can, um, you know, we do have a, we do have the power to, to, um, to change things, so to speak. And, and I think it's our responsibility to make people look as, as wonderful, or as beautiful or whatever it is um, that they can possibly be. I mean, like I, I know, I know David's work and I know you too, Bella, and I know that, the kick that we get is that person looking at that photograph and going, that's the coolest photograph I've seen of myself ever. That's the kick that I get. And I, I, I would yeah. think that it's the same that you do. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this comes back to then to the, the editing and, and people not taking that pride in their work, you know, just handing over your card at the end of the day, by the nature of what we do and the takes and the chaos that happens on a set, there's always going to be an image that I take where where the actor's, you know, mid-speaking and his eyes yeah. half shut and his mouth is open and he doesn't look good. I delete yep. that image. You know, obviously yep. if there's an element or something, I might send it to the studio and be like, please use this just for the element. I won't completely get rid of it. But if there's nothing in that photo that, that is useful and it's protecting the actor from anybody making the mistake of using an image that doesn't make them look their best, then then yeah, don't even, don't even give the option. No, I'm with you. I, and I, I, I can't understand them just turning over a card with everything on it. Yeah, I don't know. Back, back to our back to our transparency days. Did you shoot? You would have shot some film though, Chia, right? Uh, yeah, early days, but not professional. The tail end. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, I mean, like with, with David and I, I mean, the early days were transparency, which was um, you know beautiful to to work with because it really taught us what exposure was. But I used to do my edits. And because they would always, the studio would always ask, you know, if you got them done at the lab, they would want them numbered from, you know, from the beginning. And they would sit there. And I remember the first film I did, you know, because I did my edit and it'd be like, there's number blah, blah, blah to this one missing and that missing. And, and it's like, oh, really? You watched it that closely? It was like, you know, a dead frame. And so then what I used to do on Matrix, for example, I would do my edit and then I would hand number every every transparency so that, no one could sit there and go, well, this frame is missing. So I'd sit there for hours every night with a, with a little Sharpie pen, writing them all down. <laughs> I, I, used, I used to go to the lab. I, I used to have the lab do my stuff and I'd go there, 
go there really early on to the studio and I'd edit before they numbered. There you go. See? Uh, and the same thing when digital happened, I, I always set it up on the cameras, or on the computer. Do not remember this number and number everything <laughs> yourself after you've edited. And yeah. that means for editing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you guys. Hey, um, I, I, th I, <laughs> I think we better hook into some photos because <laughs> this is, otherwise this is going to be like an eight-parter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, I think that we should uh, hook into some photos because, like I said, otherwise it's going to turn into an eight-parter. So, um, I've got all the time which, in the world. Oh, good. Well, then let's just keep cheer up. She <laughs> so can do an all-nighter and go straight to set. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. I love this photograph. Getting it straight out, what this means the most to me is actually me being able to sit there and hopefully one day see my son. And it's like, you know, I did, um, I, sh I shot some No Time to Die uh, last year in 2019. And, um, uh, and I realised at the end of it, like by the time the next one comes around, I'll be able to have my son on set with me. So oh, it must have been a little bit like I, I can I know that you're a great dad, David, and um it must have been something, it must have been a really, really beautiful moment for you to know that you can actually bring your your daughter to work, right? Yeah, but it it goes back way back beyond this. This is is awesome to be eight to, weeks to, old for us to work alongside each other. <laughs> the first picture I have of here on set is on Shinda's list. She was sitting on Steven Spielberg's knee on the set. She was really little then. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very Aww. proud of her then. It was, uh, my, her mother was with me. We had to go back to England. And then it was a night. I, was, I spent like three weeks at the end of the movie at Spielberg's offices working on images and I had to cheer, I had to pick her up, she was in the studio somewhere and I had to go and find her because I had her on a plane the next morning so I had to get home, take her to dinner and say and I found her eventually, she was in Steven Spielberg's office and they had a little kit between them, chatting to it. Zorro. No, uh, Zorro, right. Zorro had fallen off the back of a water truck mm. and was adopted by the Spielberg Corporation, Hamblin. <laughs> so it was like uh, her heart and then she was she was movie business. You know, it was like, there was no way around it. I, I, never, I never wanted to be anywhere else. <laughs> no. You know, the son of my sister wanted to spend with her friends and... I just wanted to be a crew member. I would like, let anybody, anyone that would let me help, whether it was sound department or running off the DJ with film or craft service. service, letting me walk around with sandwiches. Whoever would let me help, I wanted to do it. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful had, relationship. One of the best I, love, I just had, had was on Twister, where she was, was assistant to the dessert caterer. <laughs> yeah, I was allowed to make a dessert. <laughs> that was awesome. That's funny. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing better than having your, your child on set or any, any anyone's child in a way. I think kids should be allowed on set more often. It's like I just finished a film and I was lucky enough to have my 13-year-old Hunter on set with me for six weeks. Oh, cool. So it was, um, so, you know, he missed out on a bunch of school. But, you know, it's moments that you don't get back and the education that yeah. he got then and, and, and Chair, yeah. the, the education that you got on a film set it sets you up for life, right? That is cool, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. You know what? I The thing I think is the, that I've noticed the most as I've grown up is the adaptability. You know, chuck me into any group of people anywhere. And I'll, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if I feel anxious, but I, I'll figure it out because that's what film crew do. Every movie is a different crew, different scenario, different location, and you all adapt quickly. And I think that's the, the kind of the number one thing that's just sort of a, I don't even notice it anymore. It's just part of who I am because I've been doing that since I was so young. So I think that's the number one thing it, it really gave me. That's a good point, actually. You know, the, the fact that you can engage with anyone um, 
and, and you know, it teaches you that, that those skills, which social skills are more important than anything. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> First uh, uh, no, that was forever young. No, that's forever young, isn't it? Look at yeah. that now. It says Mel Gibson on the chair. It says Mel Gibson. That's forever young. <laughs> that's, that's the... And that's, that's We've got a few... big sister who now is an executive at Warner Brothers. Oh, wow. It's family that's business. very cool. Yeah, family right. Business. Wow, wow, wow. That's um. It is a cute photo. I've got my screen over here, so if I look over over towards it, what are you reading? Word seek. Oh, so you're doing some schoolwork. <laughs> oh, see, it's not bad. That is a that is a really cool set rat shot of like you know here you are in the middle yeah. of the set, sitting next to the director. In you know these days would be in front of a monitor, but probably not those days. And um, <laughs> this, no, that was pre, this pre monitor is... days. Pretty monitor, That's but this is also I, Mel Gibson. Is this the same? This must have been the same um, same time that they used to have these big, you know, the cleaning bins that the cleaner comes around with. They're the really big yeah. bin that they're emptying all the other bins into. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but Mel Gibson walked up and picked me up, and I thought it was really funny to put me in one because it was bigger than me. <laughs> and That's left funny. me in it, and I couldn't get yeah, out. Yeah, put it in and just walked around after. <laughs> You're probably making too much noise. You've heard of that expression, train the trash, right? This is yeah. set trash. <laughs> 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 oh, <love it>. rude. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, now, I, I had, uh, before you say anything, I had to put this first because this is just an absolutely extraordinary image and. Um, it does remind me of a kappa, and I mean, I quite often channel my inner Tim Page, and I have to say that um, it's just extraordinary. And this is this is the reason why I got into photography because of images like this, and it tells it tells every story of what's going on. There's it's like there's not an there's not an area of this frame that you don't want to stare at for minutes, right? Thank you. You know, the, before I, this is from Private Ryan, and before I started that movie, and what I try and do on all of those historic movies is to study the work period. And for me, there was no doubt Robert Kappa was there on the D Day Normandy landings. Mm -hmm. Right? He shot that and I could not make I, I wanted that and I kept it wide angle so I could blow it up and I was shooting film as well right so it's pre-digital I tried to get the look of Kappa's picture I saw Kappa's original negative and the group in it oh, those wow. guys in it were teeny blew them up out of it or the photo you know, the photo editors of the magazine blew them up out of that image could not get because the film that he shot on in 1940 was way different to the film I shot uh, yeah. decades later. Yeah, it was only I only got this look when through Photoshop, and I'd scan the negative, and then I went into there's a, a plugin called Exposure, so. I, Exposure and then exposure allows you to go through a lot of old grains of films. Oh, yes. So I added the grain of that film to the image, right? And that's how I got his look. In fact, after that, Tom Hanks used to refer to as Mr. Capo every day. <laughs> you know, so, I love which, it. Which was a great honor for me to be. Oh called Robert Kappa and this is another interesting thing in that movie I had the first first real outside of Schindler's List the first real war battle movie I talked to our military advisor Dai, who had been in three theatres of war he fought Vietnam, Korea and some of the sales right but he injured, he was a technical advisor, and he was a captain 
he turned down being colonel because he would not leave his platoon. I, oh, wow. So he stayed with them. He, he, I said, look, I didn't show Steven Spielberg one image until I turned it to, to Dale. And I said to Dale one day, I said, tell me being a war photographer. He said, well, think of it as shooting bums and elbows. If you go through charging soldiers, you don't ever want to be firing while they're firing a gun at you. So he said, all war photography is bum elbows. And he was absolutely David, right, unless, you know, unless the battle's over and you're shooting dead injured. But there's that bums and elbows. So I, on every take, could, we would rehearse where you're going to run. So you'd be running up the beach with camera crews behind you. So you, you know, it's different areas, different crew. And they would flag the explosions. And then you do, you do three or four rehearsals and you figure out, OK, I'm next to this crew just behind them, or kind of alongside, but slightly, I don't ever get the lens. You're running with it. Then they take the flags away, and you have to remember where those explosions go off, because they're going to go off mm -hmm. when you're running in them. I mean, the worst thing that happened to me was, I got, would, I was running with, there's a, a soldier on my right and a camera on his right, and I would often get hit in the head with the cases from his machine gun. But that's all right. That was part of the action. Is there voice explosions? Everything became real. And like Robert Kappa did in his book, Robert Kappa went to his first war, it was the Spanish Civil War. Got, he sent his film back to Paris. After a while, he flew, got trained back to Paris, and he was, he was horrified. They were sharp, they were beautifully exposed. They look like stills from movies. Yeah, right. Right? So when he went back, he decided against just run it and shoot it. You know, action movie. Don't worry about focus and exposure. If you've got this set yeah. to like 40, 50 feet, don't worry about that. Hey, we've got to get it sharp now. You just run and shoot. And yes. I, I shot a lot of the war stuff on Private Ryan. And, and other, Band of Brothers and Pacific, I shot a lot of it like 30, 40 of a second. Running. Yeah. Right? And, and, it, and let it go. Let it be slightly blurry. Let it, let it, it doesn't matter. The, the more movement, blurry it is, the better it is. Movement brings an image to life, I think. And, um, uh, you know, a dirty frame. I mean, imperfections is what makes photography beautiful for me and and i have to say with this image and what you were saying before i read a piece that you did in the beginning of my career talking about private ryan and you mentioned in it that you would you would never photographed anyone in front of the uh weapon because that's not that's where you get shot that's where you right. die right so you wanted to bring that realism i can't remember what it was in but it was um but I, but I do remember reading it. You, you'd probably remember better than I, but it'll be in the archive somewhere. But, you know, it, it was, I mean, it's true. You've got, if, if, you, if you're going to do war photography, I mean, yeah, there's, there's some great war photographers. But uh, for me, the best book to read was not, not the biography on Kappa, which I've read and it was pretty dull. But the, his own biography, and it's called Slightly Out of Focus. And it's right. an awesome book. He, he spent a while, which is very funny, he, he spent a while, he had an affair with Bergman, right? And she took him to Hollywood and made him shoot on the sets and she didn't go to war. And he, oh. says, he says in his book, he said, being a photographer on movies is the same as being a photographer on the battlefield. Days and weeks of tedium followed by moments of glory. glory. I love that. <laughs> I love that quote. I love like that. Like your number one favorite thing to say to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's so true. It's like, you know, I come from a newspaper background and, and um, th that training for me shooting, you know, as you know, you know, I, 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 
I'm known to like shooting on an action film or two. And, um, and that was the best training that I could possibly have ever got. And, you know, just with deadlines and the spontaneity and, you know, picking up a camera and you're already shooting before it gets to your eye and, you know, that, that sort of being at one with your camera and, you know, although, you know, you're very much a team, you've got to be the boss of the camera. You've got to tell it what to do. And, yeah. you know, images like this just I – w- I want a print of this, David, please, if that's possible, because this is absolutely – just blows me away. Oh. And, oh, oh. And, uh, <laughs> that's giving a lot of attention now because they're talking about making another one. Yeah, but right. I, Isn't he a lovely man? Oh, he is the most yeah. fabulous man. He, I did that. I did with a Sicilian with him, and then I did for like two years like specials on all his movies. He would just fly me out to Paris or Greece or wherever he was shooting in those for a few days. And, and we oh. had a great, great relationship. In fact, I have, I have a picture of Chia in Rome with him and, and Dea, my daughter. I think you've got a picture of Chia. Somewhere, yeah. yeah. Somewhere we have that picture. But he yeah. was an awesome guy. But Liz, do you want a little side story to this photograph? <laughs> yes, that's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was like, this is in Fort William in Scotland, in the most remote area, and it was pissing with rain. Honestly, the rain was horizontally. The, the camera operator said to me, and the camera was like pointing upwards. Said, David, look at this. Come look at this view. I looked through his viewfinder, and it was like an underwater shot. See the water, <laughs> all right, under, under the blur, and then there's heads above that. So we broke for lunch, and Christoph and Henry called me. He said, "David, do you want to go and get warm for lunch?" I said, "Yeah, you pet." So we jumped into his car, and we all went up to his loneliest pub in the world. It's in the Scottish Highlands. It's run by a man named Hamish, who was the head of the Scottish Mountain Rescue Team. It was also technical <laughs> on the film about climbing that Sean had done previously. So we were up there and we, three of us, so we walked in and Sean said, Sean, back room, back room. He said, he said to Sean, back room. So we go in the back room, there's a big log fire and there were like four or five bottles of different homemade single malts. The three of us sat there having single malts for lunch. And they brought in all sorts of wonderful food. It was the best lunch ever. And that was like, that was just after I shot that. Photo. I love it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 stories uh, always come back to booze. <laughs> they do, don't they? It's, like, it's, it's been really interesting. Like I try not to look too much at the photographs before I get them because I want them to be um, a surprise to me as well. But um it's uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, this is the style of photography that I love. I don't know. It's just it's it's strange for me to look at sometimes because I can. It, it's almost like oh, I, that's the, that's sort of how I would have shot it. I think that's probably why I have this um, affinity for you and and for for what you shoot. You know what it is. I understand your style of photography. I think that's probably what it, what it is and what okay. you're trying to what you're trying to get out there and, you know, it, with with my, with photography and, you know, with mine, whatever, you know, I want people to look at it and go, wow. And every image that I see of yours makes me say, wow. And I yeah. want to go and see that Thank movie. I, wish, I want I to see Highlander. You explain my style to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to edit half that out because I sound like a numpty, but... But it does. I mean, I look at this and it's like, I want to go and see that movie. I want to see the story. I want to see what what he's looking at. Well, that's what... You know what, Jason? Jason? The picture you took of Charlize on her knees in the desert oh, on Mad God, Max that, that was had amazing. that effect on me. That was oh, amazing. wow. Oh, thank you. So there that's you go. very cool. You say that about your photographs. <laughs> well, there you go. We're in the, yeah, we're in that, the right that crowd. Was, we're in the right room. incredible picture. Uh, thanks, and David. I, yeah, it was Charlize. I love Charlize as well, but that was an awesome picture. Yeah, oh, stunning, 
Stunning. She's um she's something else, you know, and and that's a really good example actually of you know um I like photographing the the um, director's performance, you know, the same as you. It's like you know setups to a degree suck the life out of an image, and yeah, um and to I have a before and after of that shot of you know her performance for George, and then when they called cut. And I use it quite often in my talks because you can literally people go, oh, yeah, but you set it up. It's like no actor's ever going to give you the same performance that they give the director. And so it's our responsibility to capture that. And, you know, the second that cut is called, you can see the energy expire out of the body. And, um, you know, right. it's a real skill for us to capture these these moments. And, oh, Rob Roy. Oh, Le- oh, I love the lovely story about this shot. Oh. Right. I, I was yep. there just, um, just literally. I was not the unit photographer. I was there just shoot the poster. And this was the poster. But I talked to the director beforehand, and he said, "Don't forget who Rob Roy was." Because I said, "What do what do you want to see in the poster?" Said, well, don't think Rob Roy was a hero. Rob Roy was a cattle rustler. And he would hold the people's cattle, then take protection money from them to give them their cattle to guard them. <laughs> and he was the one who was feeding the cattle in the first place. So yeah. I went to I went to now I'd done Schindler's List with Liam, so we had a good relationship. And I said to Liam, and he was about to get the sword out. I said, No. Give me a fistful of dollars. And he said, What? I said, Give me a fistful of dollars. He said, I, and he did, and this is the shot he gave me. And it was, I love it. you know, it's like, yeah, okay, forget Rob Roy, doesn't exist, fistful of dollars, Clint Eastwood, right? And he did it. I mean, I know I've got to watch this I movie again, one, actually. He, he was a good guy. I love his films, and um, I've been watching them with my son, and uh, and we haven't watched Rob Roy together, so I think I might have to give it a crack. Yeah, this movie. Oh, I love it. Oh, oh Schindler's, God. right? Okay, now this, this shot has a story. This right. shot is this is not in the movie, right? This is this set was built. It's supposed to be camp, which was destroyed after the war. Armand Burt, who was played by Ray Fox, there was a moment because he had certain staff. He had a kid who was like a Jewish kid who was could read and write very well, was a scholar at school, became his secretary on demand. He was not told, you are going to be the secretary. And then there were other visitors. There were certain Jews, prisoners who were allowed out into town to get the stuff for Germans. And then one guy came in one day and he had a wide tie on and he had circle patterns in the tie. And they cut the circle out with a lyca behind poking through the circle. And Armand Gert was standing there, having taken pot shots at prisoners who don't move fast enough. And this guy just pressed the button. All right. They took that film, they put it in a tobacco can, took it to into the town, and they took two sticks out of the sent a plinth in the town, the monument, stuffed the film in that can back in there and put the bricks back. 20 years yeah. after the war finished, somebody remembered it was there. They went and took the bricks out, found the can, undeveloped film, developed it. And that there's an image that I absolutely copied religiously of Armengut standing like that. Steven Spielberg beside me and just did not say a word. Just let me have, and he made sure that because he was there, that the assistant directors kept the crowd working in the background. But that image is not in the movie, but it's a replica of the real shot of Armengut. That oh, the magic of this business. Yeah, and, and, you know, I mean, that only comes from 
a collaboration with uh, someone like Spielberg. Who, I don't know how you've done like a dozen films with him or something, right? And you know the Some respect that he must have yeah. you. Well, we, I mean, it's uh, incredible. You know, what, Stevens, when when we started shooting, there's this in on the set. It was half day shooting there, and Stephen said to me, he pulled me aside. He said, David, where and this is a great lesson I think for almost everybody. He said. Wherever I go, you watch. I want to do a setup. Fifteen people follow me. Wherever you go, you're on your own. You're my second pair of eyes on the set. I do see something that I haven't seen. Come and tell me about it. Oh. And we had that relationship, you know, and it was it was very very special. It makes a difference, special. doesn't it, when they give you that kind oh, of my. access? Yes, it does. Somebody it said really to me does. the other day. I, this might be a really well-known quote. I haven't heard it, but somebody on our crew said to me, um, he saw an image I'd taken and, and I said, oh, yeah, you know, I got lucky because it was one of those moments and I got lucky. And he said to me that luck is simply where opportunity meets hard work. And I Sorry. walked away from that thinking that's so true for like something like this. You brought the hard work. Spielberg gave you the opportunity. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then and then there's magic. Well, he I mean, clearly, you know, appreciates your eye too, and um, uh, I think that's a that's a that's a big thing, and that blows me away too. With some directors, it's like I'll see something and then I'll go to photograph it, and they'll go, um, you know, like James Wan did it to me once, and he's like, "Oh, Jace, what about over here?" And I I completely dismissed it because I didn't think it was going to work. And I went over, and it's like, oh my gosh, you, you're 100 mm. percent right. And it was it was just something that I hadn't seen. And I, I, you know, I really do love the way people see things, you know, regardless of who it is. And you know, it, it, it's all a collaborative effort. Yeah. Your work mixed with their work. We had, I, I did Jesus Superstar, right, with New Jersey a long time ago, and. The last night in Nazareth in a Roman auditorium, when it's the last number of the film, Judas comes and says, Jesus Christ, who are you? Know, who do you think you are? And they, the way they did it, they're on a Chapman crane. They had the camera, the platform built in front of the camera with Judas on it singing right into the lens. And the camera wings around the auditorium. There's Norma Jewison up there, there's the operator up there. And focus puller. There's no way I could be up there. In those days, mm. we didn't have remote cameras. It wouldn't have worked anyway because it's thinking around. Mm. So we had all the night lights through the night shooting. So I got my camera and got down in the dirt. Then it was, it was like using a Nikon, and you could take two find off the top. And I put a star yeah. filter on it and I started photographing the actor or the back, really, and Jesus, because I get to him. Mm. And getting all the lights as stars. Norman just and they came down to reload. And Norman got off the crane. He came over. He'd been watching me from on the crane. He came over. He said, "What do you got down there?" And he looked in my viewfinder and he said to Dougie Slocum, the camera DP, he said, "Dougie, we have star filter." He said, hey, "Yes, Captain. Well, of course we have." He said, "Well, get that goddamn camera off the crane. We're going to start the scene again, David's angle." And they shot the whole scene shooting the, the movie lights the stars right and the way it is in the movie so oh, you, had, wow. you know you had by that energy you had that magic little touch for the director i mean i did yeah. i did fiddle around the room i mean you would always come and look at where i was shooting from as well you know so we, yeah. we collaborated really well on that film on, on yeah it's a good but it is it, it's all... if you, you feel you have contributed something to the project uh, mm. It's it's always a good feeling when you've you've got that one take and then next next minute B cams right where you were and it's like mm -hmm. oh well, I got no, one no, over. No, no. <laughs> there's, 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 oh, oh. oh that's the shot, right? Yeah. Oh they, my they, god. We put them outside shooting those factory in that they were marching past because it was the end of the war and they were being released. We got to be extras quite a few times. <laughs> it's like, what do you do with your kid on set when it's been a long day? Oh, we need extras. Shove them in a uh, costume. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
That's so fun. That's your older sister, is it? That's Dea. That's Dea, yeah. yeah. Right. Dea's wow. first starring role in, in um, Yentl. We were oh, shooting really? in Prague and she was about four years old. And Barbara fell in love with her. So th there's a scene of her in the movie. She played an extra in some scenes. In another scene, she's in, in the synagogue. In, in the ladies' section, she's fast asleep in Renata's arms. Yeah, she slept with all of She's she's so striking, Barbara. I was looking at some images um, yesterday of her, of you know, of yours and and others, and it's like, oh, just that face to photograph. Oh my gosh, there's so much, so much there. Well, now hold on, before you go anywhere here, chair, I have to say, right, looking through, because I've never had yours and David's photos together. And there's some distinct moments, which, which I'll be interested whether you guys agree in any way. But for me, June is uh, well. Actually, I'll go back. Um, uh, Fallout looks like it was the beginning of the changing of the guard, and then June <laughs> is you 100 um, percent coming into your own and. Um, and I really, I, I really love looking at this transition period. I don't know. Am I right in any way? No, you. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I am. When I look, I don't know that I'm so this, conscious of it. I, when I look at this, I am so, so proud. Yeah. Because every, everything I've seen in June is like you learnt your lessons well. You, I, you have... I feel I feel very sort of torn about this in the sense that yes, I think timing wise, obviously it was an opportunity for me to kind of show my chops, but also how lucky am I that I got to do it with something like June where it, you know they made it pretty easy for me. It's it's an epically beautiful film. The way it's shot is stunning. So I would have had to try really hard to make these pictures look bad, you know. I, so I, I feel kind of, I don't know. Yeah. I, yes, I do think it, it sort of feels like a shining moment because I was a little bit coming out of the shadow of David James. But also, I mean, you know, when you see the movie, you will see like it is, it, it, I think if I'd been on a rom-com with two people in a, sitting at a dining room table, we might not <laughs> have the same no, you, conversation, you, you, you know? You've got to look at this and know you've lost your own shadow. Yeah. Yeah, look, I wouldn't have, you, you You and I sat down in a pub, what, maybe eight years ago now, and and <laughs> it is a, for a long time my dad said to me, don't do this job, it's a dying breed, <laughs> it, you know, you'll make no money, you'll have no respect, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And I listened <laughs> for a long time. Yes, and when we finally kind of coincidence and the journey of my life brought me back to England and and put me back in a position to take a job with, with David again. And, and it wasn't until we were on Star Wars together that I kind of sat down with him and said, maybe I do want to do this and maybe I can figure out a way not to mentally live in your shadow. Um, and it, it, it took us working properly together with a mutual respect and David allowing me to photograph my way um, for both he and then I, you know, I think it took David's reactions to my images and going, oh, we've got these two images of the same scene. I like yours better. I'm gonna put yours in the filmmaker selects. For him to say that, over his own work made me go, oh, if you believe that, then I believe that. So, you know, it, it, it took that for me to kind of believe I could come out of that shadow. Um, and then it became competitive, right? Then then the father-daughter <laughs> like bond became like, oh, oh, I'm gonna outdo you. You, you did that, I'm gonna do this, you know? So now yeah, I'm just, but... <laughs> forget the shadow, now I'm just trying to be better than you. <laughs> That's, no, but that's there, where you've got to be. There, there, there's a moment here, I think, this as well, that when Cheer started showing, you know, going on her own path, and I looked at this stuff, and I, 
I was always brought up with the fact of how you lay out the scene, like columns and columns, and mm -hmm. where this person should look into the frame, never out of it, right? Unless you want that to lead to the next page. She started shooting pictures where somebody was actually more over the side of the frame and not looking into it. I love and a bit honestly, of dead space. I, I was really impressed by that. I tried it. No way it <laughs> worked at it. all. But she does beautifully. She has like this whole yeah. new, fresh approach to it. And she works <laughs> up to it. I can't even. Well, there's great, it. just like there's great storytelling there, you know, with the with the angles and the lines, and exactly what you're talking about there, David, with the with the off center, um, especially, you know, with them being forward of it, and the, you know, the eye lines being forward of it. But it's for me, it's like, you know, there's a, there's a story behind them, so to speak. You know, it's like you want to know again. You know, it's like our job is to get bums on seats or help get bums on seats, and you know, you look at images like this and. And again, you know, I want to go and see the movie because I want to know what they're looking at and I want to know where they came from. Yeah, you know what? It um, doesn't matter who you've got in the movie. If you haven't got great pictures to show the people, you're going to get any bumps on the seats. You know? yep. do, you remember, do you remember that? Look at that. It's just gorgeous. I know, right? That is so beautiful. <laughs> I'd have framed that with them over the left. Right. So they're looking into the shot. <laughs> I couldn't have she does through it. there. <laughs> and it makes, but that, the, way, the, the way that composed, it makes me want to look and see what they're looking at. And, they say, yeah. and there's a story there. It becomes about them. You know, it's like, yeah, what were you? Is this like a 35 or a 35 or a 50? Oh, I think probably 35. There's it doesn't look we, wider than 35, right? Yeah, no, it wouldn't have been. We we were on, the, the rock that they're on is really narrow. I mean, it's only a few feet wide. And we had a long trail of people walking the length of it single file. But then we also had a crane tracking next to them in this tiny right. space. Um, so when, when they were walking, there really was nowhere, you know, it wasn't even like I could crouch next to the camera cause the camera was tracking. So there really was nowhere safe to be. Um, so I had to, you know, every time that they, they finished the take and tied it again, the whole train of people would have to single file back down the rock to the other end to single file and walk again. So on their walk back. I basically held up the line for a second and just grabbed Timothy and Rebecca and said, you know, I, I literally had about two seconds with them, um, stuck them on the edge of the rock and asked them to look out at their futures within the scene. You know, it, it made sense to what we were shooting. Um, and uh, it, it was about five seconds worth of, of shooting and yelling, thank you, and running back off to my little corner of the rock. Um, and and this is you know this is what comes from it that is the key there the five seconds of shooting which is the story of our lives and other photographers <laughs> don't realize that that you know you pull off an image like this literally within with two or three frames and you're thinking about the image before like you've already got it sort of worked out you've got to have a plan because they want to know what to know, do you've got to direct them yeah. you know and, you know, like, uh, you know, other photographers spend a, a day doing the same thing and it's like there's really something about the unit photographer that, um, uh, you know, they're, they're in a realm of their own in a way. It's like, you know, you look at us, yeah. look at all of us and um, the unit photographer is probably the most published photographer on the planet. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, there's... Probably, yeah. there's there's nowhere in the there's barely anywhere in the world that you won't see the images from one of one of the campaigns that we've worked on and you know you can't yeah. say that for a fashion photographer or any other photographer it's the unit photographer it's just amazing I love that there's nothing there's, there's that there's, I couldn't think of anything that you would possibly do to make that image better right David no nothing at all 
Absolutely nothing. Well done, Chia. It's, it's, uh, Thanks, guys. Awesome. <laughs> Flattered. <laughs> You know what's the nicest thing about that one for me is looking hmm. at it and knowing the story behind it and being on that rock with the people that I was with. That whole, just that whole journey was so special that I think you feel that in the image as well. You know, like the, the images are what they are because behind the scenes of it was so beautiful as well. So I yeah. think that comes. And Rebecca's a good mate of yours too, right? She is. She is. That's so cool. Look, I've got a photograph of her further down the line too, I think. You got that? And there's a photograph of her further down the line or two, I think. Oh, right? okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. <laughs> Superman. Shot in Sydney. I, know, I love it's a great BTS, picture, and this it. is just a classic. That, that to me yes, is... I've, heard all the, I've heard all the stories about that one. <laughs> yeah. That, that to oh, me right, was, yes. um, was my favourite image of that movie. You do love an umbrella shot. Yes. That's a great one too, because normally in Australia, um, they're like Bunnings, which is like a Walmart. Like so, it'll be an ad for ad for Walmart or Bunnings. But this one's actually got Fox Studios on it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. So that's a rarity. Like, yeah. I have to punch. Uh, I have to punch in on that later and see who that um, who that set PA is. She'll have a name um, on the radio. Yeah, I can't. Remember. She's a lovely girl. I can't remember her name now. She was like third day or something. Yeah, yeah right. She was, she was, I love it. Love she, that. And she, in, in the middle of a wet down, right? Wet. She was getting wet. Yeah. You can see it. She's getting drenched. <laughs> Poor girl. Said it all. But listen, she, she was honoured to be in there keeping him dry. Extraordinary set too. I love him. Oh, I love it. I, B, huh? BTS are my lands. BTS are... Um, and my landscape images, it's like, you know, it's, it just tells a different story, doesn't it? It does. It really does, yeah. I mean, you know, that that could have been green screen. Mm. Yeah, that. totally. Well, it would be now. Yes, it would be. I love this. That's the, that's the image that kind of started it all. That's right. Is that, the one that, is that the one that... I wasn't right. even meant to be a photographer on that movie. <laughs> I was okay, just, come on, do tell. So, so I had moved back to England. I had been working at the studios in LA. I had been working in production and I was burned out. And I wasn't happy. And I had got through a series of tragedies that made me really feel like life was just way too short. And um, instead of taking a potential promotion, I quit and packed up my flat and took my dog and went back to England thinking, I'm just going to go for a year. I need to do this for myself. I need to be back in my homeland. And um, six months in, I was really questioning what I'd done. I was working in a pub and <laughs> feeling like maybe I had made a massive mistake. And um, I, I was really excited because DJ called and said, you know, I'm, I'm coming to England. And I was really missing my family at that point. And he uh, said, I'm coming to England, I'm coming to do Star Wars. And I was like, oh, great, at least, you know, he will be here. So I will have family here, it'll be great. And um, I think you did, you went and did the Abu Dhabi unit at the beginning of the movie. And because of the nature of it being Star Wars and this huge reboot um, and, and such a franchise, they had a huge stills department, both, you know, data wranglers and props photographers and franchise photographers and, and this whole thing going on. And, and David basically went to the producers and was like, I, there's too much for me to do on my own here. Like I need hands. I need somebody to sort of manage this. Um, so they let him hire me. And I said, no, at the beginning, I said, D -d -d I always said I wouldn't work for you. I don't want your hand out. So I was really quite aggressive about it. Um, <laughs> I, I remember seeing, I was staying at my uncle's. I was staying at my uncle's house, and I remember my dad saying to me, um, God, "What did you say? You, you." I was sitting on the kitchen floor, and you said, um, "It's only a few months. It's one job. It, isn't it better than working in the pub?" And I remember thinking, "Okay, yeah, you've got me there. Fair enough. Um, I would rather be doing that than working in the pub." So. 
convinced me to come and do it. And it, it was so manic. There was so much going on and there, there'd be something happening in the creatures department at the same time as something happening on second unit, at the same time as, and so all the photographers would be busy. So DJ would just, you know, having trained me and, and knowing I could, you know, shoot as he would shoot, um, not nearly as good, but at least had the right mindset. He would just chuck a camera at me and be like, take this camera, take this body, take this lens, go shoot second unit. Okay, fine. I mean, I was running every day on that movie. We were just running somewhere. Um, and I went over to second unit and they were, they were doing a splinter shot, you know, bombs going off with Chewy running through and, and it, it was this kind of quick shot background shot of Chewy. And so, great. And I, and I shot this and it went into the pile and by the end of the movie, we had decided, okay, I, I was going to go and attempt to be stills. And the producers had, had sort of taken notice and said that they would um, let me go on from Star Wars to Mission, which was Rogue Nation, um, kind of as David's apprentice, as a sort of junior photographer with him. Um, and uh, it wasn't until, oh God, I don't know, it must have been almost a year later. And... Um, this magazine cover came out, an Empire magazine cover came out. And on the front of it was Harrison Ford, shot by DJ. And next to him was Chewie from this from this image. And I was, so, I, I remember both of us just being kind of like, oh my God, we have a shared magazine cover. That is so cool. Like, yeah. These are both of our images on the same magazine cover. And I, that, I, that was a real sort of, oh my God, <laughs> moment for me. I mean, it still is. I still kind of, you know, all the combined posters that we have, I don't even, I don't really have words to express what that is. It's, it's one thing to get to work with your family member. That's really cool. But that's not that unusual. A lot of people work with their family yeah. members and take on family business and, and that's lovely. But to to do this, which is also, as we said, so unique to be able to be a stills duo, let alone a father daughter sort of apprenticeship into duo partnership. And then to have this shared artwork, I, I just I don't really have I don't really have words for that. I, you know, I grew up seeing you just as dad and it wasn't until I was at university and learning about Otto Preminger and I told my dad a story about Otto Preminger that I was learning about in school. And he started telling me his story about when he worked with Otto Preminger. And I remember going, oh my God, you're so old, but also <laughs> Holy crap, you're, you are actually a legend. I, I finally understood what all these filmmakers had been saying to me as a kid. Oh, your dad's a legend. Your dad's a legend. And I, yeah. I so now to be kind of, I'm not a rookie because I've grown up in it, but I am a rookie in terms of doing it professionally. And so to be in my early days, sharing a poster, not only with my dad, but also my mentor, my friend, and the legendary David James. Yep. Yeah, I feel pretty lucky. And who was proud? Oh, I totally. I felt very lucky too. I <laughs> and that picture. No, I can me. imagine. You see that one behind me? Yeah. Oh, that side. <laughs> That's a Fallout poster. Outer image. The, on that one. the image of Tom is Cheers. Yep. And the helicopter inside of Tom is Mike. Is. So it. we share the joint poster yeah, there. Super cool. We've got it coming up actually. Oh, cool. So we can have a we can have a good big close Thank look you. at it. But um, good. You know, I mean, like the, the, just. The, the years spent, you know, visiting Dad on set too, you know, learning all that set etiquette, that's one of the most important important things for a still photographer. So, you know, that gives you a pretty good head start of just knowing how to behave on a film set. And, yeah. you know, it's no wonder that you're really now just getting to work on these amazing, amazing movies. And I know that you're working on one now, which we're not going to talk about, or well, we can't talk about, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And I hope you stay uh, ahead of the pack in that action. And, do my oh, best, I'll do my best. Oh. Yeah, oh, that's that cool. Photograph. I just I want, want to, to hear, I want to know this, same here. I want to know the whole story of this, David. Okay. Christopher Waltz, 
who's one of the loveliest people on the planet. We were doing water for elephants, and he just we were this was between setups, and Chris he walked over and he was just stroking the elephant's trunk, like elephant. I think that was his name, but it's like it was so, Daisy, wasn't it Daisy? Sorry? Isn't the elephant Daisy? It's a famous elephant. Oh, maybe I it was think. Daisy. That was Daisy. You're was, right. Maybe because we had a setup one day rehearsing something. Daisy walked out of the tent. Started eating grass on the outside, and then the assistant director said, "Okay, let's rehearse this again." And then we just walk straight back in, and carry on. She was amazing, but Chris was, was playing, you know, just like chatting to her. I said, "Chris, don't touch her; just lean against her." And he went up and did that, and they got that one frame. That's all I wanted, right? At the end of the oh. movie, I had that framed and I gave it to him as a gift. The first time I've made an actor physically cry. Oh, it that's beautiful too because it... he just loved that. I mean, I love that picture. It's still one of my favorites. Uh, I do too. And it's like he's, you know, I've got the, the, I've got the big screen in front of me, and you know, he's just leaning against Daisy with his eyes closed, as if he's asleep on her. And um, yeah. it really is. It's, it really is a gorgeous. A good it's, it's, a, it's a love affair, and the way mm -hmm. he's framed, the way he's framed in that rectangle bet between her trunk and her leg, it's a picture. Yeah, of picture. No, I just say. Like, do, do elephants sleep standing up? <laughs> no, I don't know. Google there's that some really animals that do, right? No, no. I don't know. They, 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 I like I want to. I want to Google this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Google it for us, will you? <laughs> uh, and here's Fiddler. Oh, I remember okay. seeing this image, and just with the, just the perfect frame with the star, of David, the, the the everything. Okay, just, I tell you about this story. This you could not do today because we were in. This is on Fiddler on the Roof, obviously in Yugoslavia, and. I said on the night before we, or the day before, we had done stuff with the fiddler on the, with, in the sunset. And I said to Norman Jewish, and I'd love to bring him out here at dawn. He said, we'll do it. So the grips, we talked to the grips, who laid down a very long ladder, left it down, lying on the ground by the building. <laughs> right? I had a Volkswagen Beetle. Tutti had his costume and the violin, the fiddle. We left at the hotel at four o'clock in the morning. We drove through the fog. We actually drove into a ditch because of, they had dug up part of the road and they hadn't put any barriers up. We couldn't see it fog. We managed to pick it out of the ditch and then carried on. We got to the set. It was still dark. Right? Put the ladder up and there's a lot of dew. So the the roof was quite wet. So we got the ladder up and he, he goes to the gutter. Then he had to clamber up over the gutter, and clamber sliding upwards up the roof and sit himself on the chimney pot. So way back on like a 200 mil lens and shot the pictures. And we shot different pictures. I actually got one of him with his back in the thing. So he's like on the way on his back to fiddle up. And we did a whole big photo session. And just when the sun started to come up, the unit started driving, so we had to give it up. But this to me was magic. But he almost slid down the top to get back to the ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, he slid the fiddle and the bow down to me <laughs> to catch it. It's like and, this and is we... the original before you did the Burj picture with Cruz. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. This feels like the original what? before you got to the Burj picture with Cruz sitting on top of the Burj Khalifa. <laughs> oh, this is this is original. This is what gave me the idea. Yeah, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is where it began. <laughs> but this is one of my again. It's one of my favorite because this is this picture is all Tutti and I. You know, wow! It's his pose, like the stick his leg up like that. Because he was actually playing the music while we we're doing it. Though. Da 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 oh, wow. da. <laughs> And but you're right. Up. These days, you couldn't. It'd, it'd, you'd have twenty oh, people there, and, that, and, and, and you'd, be, you'd have to be up. No one would let you do it, guys, and you'd be yeah. roped in. 
Yeah, yeah. He'd have harness on and yeah, you'd have yeah. No, just you couldn't do it. You know, they they, they tell you to fake it up. No, no, maybe we didn't fake things in. We did them. No. I love the lines in it, and just the, you know, I love lines in photography and angles, and just you just want to look at everything, and then you know you've got all these sharp lines, and then here he is, all these rounded lines, and it's um, right. it's quite a juxtaposition. It's, it's really. You, you know what's great about this as well? Is looking at that back there right now. Mm. I can I can feel the pre-dawn chill and the. Day. And were there, was there any coffee then? No. You have to wait. The case was wrong <laughs> two hours later. <laughs> it's great looking at photos that you haven't looked at for a while and remembering the story. So, I mean, like, I don't know if you guys, I'm sure, are the same as me, is that I look at an image and I can tell you a story that happened on that day from that image. It might just be, you know, a, yeah. a conversation with a PA or it might yeah, be, absolutely. you know, you feeling the dew on your face. Right. Every image has such stories. The my 80th birthday, Chia and Dea put together a book of my book. It actually made me cry. Mm -hmm. We decided you needed your own it, book. Sorry? Yeah. It we just, decided it was about time. You needed your own book. Yeah, and it was awesome. It was, it's every picture, is, there's a story in there. Oh, I love it. Really, yeah, exactly. Here you go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's like I knew you were going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, the was kind of plan. <laughs> the story of this is you have to have confidence in what you're doing and what you're up. I asked Tom to do this picture. We, we were finishing. I didn't do the first part of Night and Day. I was on doing a spiritual then. Um, Frank Massey did it. But Frank had to do something else after Christmas because they had a breakdown for Christmas. So I took it over and luckily went to with it for two or three weeks. And we, we on the last day of shooting, Tom and I are walking off the beach together. And Tom stops. He says, I'm going to do another mission. And I really don't want to do it without you there. And I stopped and I looked at him and I, and I kind of looked him right in the eye and I said, all right, but, and he said, but? I said, yeah, but you have to do something for me. You have to do a picture for me. And I said, well, every time they mention mission, they bring out pictures of mission one. It's like you haven't anything since. And he said, yeah, good point. He said, what's the picture? I said, I have no idea. I'll tell you when I see it. So we, we land up in Dubai, and on the first day of, we have a day of rehearsal of him climbing up the building and swinging the ropes. And I'm standing next to him on the deck where all the equipment is, and I nudged him, and I'm looking up, and he looks, and I just like, look up. He right to the top, and I said, remember the picture I want? That's it. I want you on top. You're the top star of the world. I want you on the tallest building on the planet. Nothing. There's no way you could sit taller than this on this planet, man made. All right? And he said, You got it. So we said, I, I went three, three times in the helicopter to check out different times of day when we could shoot it. And I went back to him and I said, Okay. We have to shoot it by 9.30 in the morning because the temperature changes, the wind picks yeah. up and it drags all the dust and crap off the desert and you can't see the city anymore. All right. I said, okay, you got it. He got up at 4.30 one morning. I had a Royal Flight helicopter with Mark Wolf was my guy in charge of it. We had a, a Royal Flight as well. But Mark was in, kind of in charge of everything. Took the door off. And I was uh, getting it ready at the airport, and they got a call from the assistant at 4.30 in the morning. Had to get up, do hair and makeup, pair, a pair of shorts and a, a, a sweat top on. And he had to go 250 floors by elevators. Then he had to climb 200 feet in that steel tube 
in vertical climb, like you do in the submarine thing, right? Or is going down a drain. Or going up a drain on this one. We had a stunt guy and the climber up there waiting to find them in. And I said I I had given them instructions. There is no way I'm gonna touch a pixel on this picture. If there's graffiti up there, which there was from the guys who built it. I said, there's no way of touching a pic because we can never be accused of it's a fake. Yeah. Right? So I am obviously a safety line in, but I mustn't see it. Yeah. So they actually put in, they put in a, a trouser belt on and they had the line at the belt and attached to the piece of the building. So there was like a trap door at the top, and those circular ones. And they had it trapped to the rim of that. And then they lay down on the floor. But I got a call from the assistant director saying, you can take it now because Tom's up there. He's, being, he's fastened in. We got up there and they're all working on it. He wasn't fastened. They were still working on it. So mm. <laughs> there's a, not far from the verge. There's a big sort of dirt parking lot. We landed in the parking lot. There's a Starbucks right there. So we ran over and got coffees and waited. And then he said, okay, he's fine now. Come back. We took off. Now, and we have, you know, our engines are running all the time. So we mm -hmm. are using fuel. So we, yep. we actually took off. We got the shot. On this shot, Tom always has, like a lot of actors do, have a problem looking into bright light. They squint. And I was told this by Elizabeth Taylor a long time ago, that she by a DP. When you, when you walk on the set and it's all bright lights, shut your eyes and look into the brightest light. Then open them and you can keep them open easy because your pupils are late and you can, no squinting. You're like, so I told Tom that a long time ago. So I, t I wanted Tom, which was the other shot, they used on the James Show, looking down on him, seeing the city in the background. But this shot, he started looking that way. And I said over, over the radio, I said, Tom, give me Rodan. <laughs> no, Rodan is right, the thinker. So he did it. And he just took on that pose. And I got shot. And that shot was my favorite. The one that the James Show used looking down on him. But that's still my favorite shot of him. And that's the TC just never gets it too, right? Repeated, eh? TC just gets it. He's he. he uh, oh, I don't sorry. think there's a, a job on a film set that he couldn't do. No, totally. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was so into it, and we did get accused of faking it. But then there was a paparazzi somewhere on the top of one of the hotel buildings got a shot. You can't see it, Tom. You can see it a little bit up there. But there's a big yellow helicopter right behind him with me sitting in the doorway with my yeah. camera. So <laughs> we proved that paparazzi. I hate paparazzi, but they pay on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they have their uses. <laughs> JJ. Uh, this, this shot was when I worked shooting film, whenever I New York, I use the Time Life Labs, a wonderful right. lab, right? but as you get out of the elevator on the Time Life lab floor, there's a huge blow up, and I think it was Cartier Bresson or somebody shot it, and it's Claudia Cardinale with a Leica in front of her eye, right. and I've always been inspired by that shot. When I got, we got JJ and Chia help with this got JJ into the studio on Star Wars and I said JJ and I borrowed the viewfinder from one of the camera crew I said I just want you to look one in front of you and I want the other eye to go right through my lens to the back of my brain and he did it you know I was like, and this is still my favorite director shot oh I love it he's a great man he's a lovely man too yeah, it's like awesome. um because you and I worked for a few weeks on um, MI3 together, didn't we? Yeah, we did. That's why you showed pictures of me on it. But there, there yeah, is, there you there's go. a shot. <laughs> but, you know, that was one of those silly things, which is a good lesson in itself, is that they get me to come to China. It's like, for what, two weeks? Yeah. And, and we got to Shanghai, and it's like, 
I my thing is I've always been told location, location, location. If you're doing a shoot like mm -hmm. that, you've got to show where you are. So we're in the back streets of Shanghai, nothing that says China, except there was a wall, a white wall with China writing all over the side of it. So I stood JJ and TC against that wall. And that was the best. Yeah, that was a you know, that was that. amazing where we were down there um, in the old hutong. It's kind of sad that they knocked it all down. I remember, do you remember all the cats in the windows? Yeah, you remember there was yeah. this one hutong yeah. in the middle of it and there was a cat that was just sitting on the, on the see, this is the things that we remember. <laughs> so you, you, you remember, <laughs> the cat. You remember the, when I, I did the group shot in the doorway, right, which you were yep. actually shooting me, shooting them. And yep. I went back like two days later, just just to have a look again, that doorway, those buildings all gone flat. Oh my god. Nothing yeah. left. Yep. There was uh, my son, remember Stratton Leopold, the um our producer? I remember Stratton. Yes. Yeah. Well my son's name is Hunter Stratton Boland, and uh, we named ah. him after Stratton because I love I, like, I said to Stratton, it's like, oh my god, Stratton Leopold, this is the coolest name I've ever heard. <laughs> And um, and he's such a lovely man as well. I said, I'm going to name my son after you. <laughs> and then I ended up having a son. And because um, we <laughs> yes. wanted Hunter, and we, yeah, because we wanted like a Hunter S. Thompson, and um, and I didn't want to do the stock and just wanted you know just an S. And it's like, oh, we've got Stratton, so we've got a Hunter S. So that's how. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, Barbara. Barbara. This is um, mirror has two faces. Is that right or? No, this, this was um, nuts. Yeah. I did remember it has two faces. I shot one of, I did Yentl with her. I did one of her own covers. But on this one, she called me to New York, or to first New York and then to LA. And she was directing on this. And she she's, was on the, on the set and she just by a camera. And I just shot her. That was it. But for, she saw I was trying to shoot her, so she's shot the hairdresser to go and pull the hair down over the high their chin. And we just shot that, just like that. And it's still one of my oh, favorite I love pictures it. of her. When I moved to LA, I had done Yentl with Barbara, right? And I'd done other stuff, uh, specials. And Renata, Barbara's wonderful assistant phoned me up one day and said hey we're just checking on you how are you doing i said i just i'm so excited i've just dropped my portfolio off at steven spielberg office because he's going to do his film called schindler's list in black and white and i love black and white and she says ah oh, barbara to call him yeah right yeah so i drive i'm in a car driving off so a few days later i get a call from Stephen's office saying, oh, you put your portfolio up. Um, we'd love you to do the movie. Um, he didn't look at it. Oh, okay. So I don't get to meet Stephen until we're in Krakow. And we have a pre-shoot party for the, uh, meet the crew. And I go up to him and, and he wouldn't tell me. As I said, this is me for having me on the movie. He's like, what do you want from me? What would you like me to, would you say, content? No, no, he said, I only want to see what you want to show. I said, well, this is music to my ears. All right, so mm -hmm. you make your selections and you show me. I don't want to see anything. I want to see content. Show me eight by tens. All right, so that's how we did the movie, but I couldn't figure, he would never say why I got on the movie. And I was told later, it was the only person on the crew he did not interview personally. If then I was doing mirror faces with Barbara in New York, and somebody had said to me, he said, Barbara made that phone call. So I went to Barbara, I believe I owe you a huge thank you. And she said, what for? I said, you made a phone call to Steven Spielberg for me. She said, ah, you deserve it. And walked away with it. <laughs> <laughs> See how things happen? You have to be nice. But she was, she was so, awesome. So we're still friends. So Schindler's, oh, that's great that you're still friends. So Schindler's was your first film with Spielberg? 
She got me my first film with Spielberg, yeah. Oh, wow, see? Yeah. But you didn't even know that, Chia. I didn't, actually. I didn't know the Babs story. <laughs> I'm learning new things. Shocking. That's funny. <laughs> this is so, uh, uh, you guys have no idea. I'm enjoying this so much. It was like. So am I. It's, it's good. It's, um, it, you know, it's just, it's just so nice to be able to share these stories yeah. for other people that are coming up. And, you know, we spoke about it before that, you know, there's no shortcuts and we're not here to give any shortcuts, but, you know, just to hear the passion and the and the stories behind images is really something quite unique. While we're on the subject of Barbara, there's, there's a great lesson here in lighting, right? Because I did, on, on Yendel, I did lots of portrait sessions with her. And then... She, has, she I was supposed to do uh, Mira has two faces with her, but they kept putting it and brushing it and brushing it. By that time, I was on another Spielberg movie, so I couldn't do it. She went into a photo session with the photographer in somewhere in North Carolina, um, and she walked in and saw his lighting set up and walked out again. And she said, mm -hmm. Nata, because I photo sessions I'd done with her on Yento and on nuts as well she had renata make a, a lighting plan of my lighting so she said to renata go back to the flat get your lighting plan bring it to the photographer All right so somebody then asked me about what was your secret with her i said well she can only be photographed on her face good and she did the question I had the eye light, which they normally put over the camera. I moved it to the left, about a foot to the left of the lens. And she said, why, why is my eye light over there? I said, Barbara, you have your face this way. It casts a shadow down here. So the eye light on here is just going to be in the wrong place. You need to move over here so it's in your eye and not creating a shadow. She said, oh, God, that's amazing. I, and, and recently, she was doing, for um, Biden's election, she was doing these on-screen talks, you know, promoting the party. And Renata called me up and said, we need to in lighting them. So I went to Sammy's camera and I got, she said, we've got the base lighting, as, but it doesn't look right. So I went to camera and I got a little light, about this big. That they could just put, and I, and I said, where, she said, where should I put it? Goes a one foot left of the lens. Mm -hmm. Left? Said, yes, one foot. And it was perfect. Right? Oh, that's so, cool. it's like, <laughs> so you got, you got to, you, you, you got to play the game. Absolutely. That, that and Daniel Christian, you know, things are good. That shot I love it. is awesome, Gia. That is so looking at it again now i've seen it before but now it's what wow it's I so funny that. what you were just saying about you know how these images bring back such an immediate i remember being there i remember what it took to get there i remember the, the lead up to that photo and and everything around it i i can picture the people behind me the people next to me i can remember what he said it's so distinct and the second you show me that image, I feel like, you know, again, also because you're the person behind the camera, even the angle of looking at him, I, I remember. It's like, but I feel like I'm there. You know, it's a great shot. That shot is that all that going on, what he's wearing, the red behind him, where do your eyes go? Straight to his eyes. You cannot not look his yeah. eyes. Well, what cracks me up about what he's wearing and, and the the scenario of that shot, because it was when we did the halo jump, where we couldn't pose anything during the jump for obvious reasons. You know, we're all on oxygen when we're up there and, and the tail of the plane is opening and you can't hear a thing and he can't have that open. And so there was never a version of doing this in the air. Um, so we had to do it on landing. But by that point, he would have done multiple jumps in the day. So every single day it was we didn't have enough time or he was completely exhausted and, and, you know, coming in and, and tacking on another half an hour to do, to do a still was just, you know, he had to yeah. worry about the next day's jump and it was just too much. So 
we tried every day to do this still um, because during the scene, the lights only come in, the red lights get turned on for a very specific moment before the plane doors open. It's kind of like a warning system within the plane. And, um, but they looked so cool. <laughs> so yeah. when he came down and we finally got the still and, and the, the plane that we were in kind of detoured around for us and gave us an extra hour in the day to shoot and, you know, all of that alone with the, with the military involvement and the plane and it's huge. It's a huge undertaking to try and, and, and get this every day. Um, and on the, on the, I think it was the last day, you know, he'd done his jumps, it had gone successfully. We, we, we timed it right. They, they got the perfect shot. Um, so I think he was a little bit more relieved and he's like, okay, now we can, we can worry about it still. So we all came back to the plane, threw on the red lights, and again, it's it's a few seconds, you know, because we only have mm. the plane for a certain amount of time. We only have him for a certain amount of time. Um, and we didn't have a whole lot of equipment. So the electrician, you know, the, the gaffer brought in a light, just as a small softbox behind us um, on the plane and hair and makeup flooded in and everybody was there and costume error and, and got him sorted. And, and it, it's a simple shot, but you know, we, we tried a few different things, turning, looking over the shoulder, all this, and the, the straight on taking the, the, the location of the plane, you know, the eye leading everything to this, this intense Tom Cruise look that he's, you know, so well known for. Um, and the lights in the helmet lit him up and, and it was great. But I remember saying to him, we were, you know, I showed him the shot and, um, I made some comment about, it's so cool, you look like you're in space. And he laughed and he made a joke. He's like, yeah, maybe on the next one. And I was like, oh yeah, Mission Impossible, set in space, ha ha ha. We had this little funny laugh and joke. And what, a year later it hit the news that he's he's actually gonna do that. <laughs> so right, yeah. I'm like, did he know? Did he already know? Sure <laughs> he did. No, I think, I, he gave him, I think he gave him the idea. No, I, I agree with you totally there, Chia, that um, the fighter pilot stance is about the uh, – about. there's definitely the best one. But, you know, I mean, like as you're saying, you know, the lights – yeah, the lights all lining up on his shoulders, the light in the yeah. in the helmet. Yeah. It's, it's just, just you know, it's still – You cannot take your eyes off the eyes. No. Nah, he feels like exactly. he's looking at me. I mean, I, I get yeah. that he was looking at me, but it still feels like he's looking at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pulling you around the room. What is that? <laughs> like, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I love it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, that's from the actual jump. <laughs> it is him, by the way. For <laughs> Since everybody I loves don't even. I don't even care. I actually, the next shot of this, well, this is a great shot to start with, but as the action people that we were sitting here with right now, we know what goes on to get this, and anyone that's watching this is seeing an, an amazing image, but just tell us the harnesses, the O, uh, the, the process that you've had to go through to it. even be allowed there. So everything about that image is so difficult. <laughs> it's so yep. far from convenient or easy or simple, but so worth every element of it. Um, so this is from Fallout, which we did together. Um, only one of us could go at the end because it was such a tiny unit. I mean, there were five of us on the plane. It was myself, the camera crew, um, and then we had like a sort of skydiving safety team who were in the plane and then the skydivers who were also jumping. So there were only a handful of us on the plane. Um, and as we said, you know, TC is so, he so understands the importance of stills, but also it, it benefits him. It's, you know, his, his whole legacy is that he does his own stunts and he, he does it all for real. That it's not green screen, it's not faked. And how, how else do you prove that? you know, other than having the, the EPK, the, the behind the scenes and still there to, to show it. So I felt really lucky, you know, that, that David brought me into a world where I got to work with somebody who, who gave me those kind of opportunities. Um, so 
we had to go through basic training because you had to be on oxygen to be on the plane when the doors open. Um, the original flight that I went up in, they had me connected at the back of the plane on the side seats and connected to a big tank that we're, we're all connected to. And I very quickly realized, you know, the door opened and everybody got up that was gonna jump. And then they all went down to the far end of the plane and these planes are massive. You can fit a smaller jet inside that plane. Wow. So all the action was taking place way down the other end of the plane. And I, I do have to admit on the very first time up, I saw him walk to the end, jump, and he's gone. Because at that speed, when you're actually watching it, I don't get to see the rest of his jump. I just see him go, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's gone. And it, it actually took my breath away. I had a little bit of a moment of like, oh my God, my boss, my boss has just jumped out of a plane once. <laughs> Where did he go? Um, uh, but it was, yeah, it was incredible. And so on the next flights up, I got to know the skydiving team and I kind of just asked a thousand questions. Um, and fortunately they were a really, really lovely team and really cooperative and helpful. And um, I think a little bit amused by my gung-ho-ness of, of wanting to know, okay, how do I do this? And how can I get there? And what about stepping out? And, and on the first couple runs up, um, as I said, I was connected to this big oxygen tank and, and really just there to get to understand so that when I could did start shooting, I would know how to use the oxygen and, and what to do mm -hmm. before worrying about taking photographs. Um, but of course, Tom knew I was on the plane, so he the doors opened and I'm just sort of wide-eyed watching this all happen. And, uh, he walked into the middle of the plane and he looked at me and he, you, you can't hear or, or talk because of the the wind and the sound up there so he just pointed at me and went and I, I knew what that meant but I also was like I don't I'm strapped in I'm not allowed to stand up because I don't have a parachute on and I'm attached to the oxygen that's on the seat below me and the safety skydiver who was sat next to me also saw this and uh, I just sort of looked at her like uh, how, what do I do? <laughs> so she she looked at me and she went, as in, you know, take a solid amount of oxygen in. So I did that. She unhooked me, unstrapped me, walked with me, because she's parachuted, so she held on to me, walked me to the center of the plane, dropped with me onto my knee. <laughs> I didn't even have a moment to kind of check my settings because the second that plane opened, it filled with light and he's, he's facing me so he's completely backlit so I just sort of you know when you get used to using your your camera so often you know where the buttons are without having to look so I I just threw it up a few stops to try and hope that my settings were right kneeled down ran off a bunch of frames with him looking at me with a wide shot and then she walked me back set me back in hooked me back up to the auction and breathe and he you know sauntered off and jumped out the plane and um <laughs> I I got such a thrill from it. It was such a challenge and it was such a it was such an experience so far out of anything I'd ever done. Um, and and because, you know, that skydiver had sort of seen me take her instruction and do it properly with her and um, they they gave me the means then to take it a little step further each time, always within their safety constraints, but also understanding that I was willing to you know, I didn't need to be hiding in the back of the plane. I, I was willing mm -hmm. to do whatever I could to get the good shot. So eventually they um, got me my own oxygen tank. So I had an individual tank, so I wasn't attached to the big one anymore. So I had to learn how to use that and get comfortable enough with that, that, um, that I could be left alone to deal with it without needing the help every time. Um, so that was fine, worked that out. But then, you know, I've got my straps I've now got the oxygen tank as well as two cameras um, trying to finagle all of this. And then in order for me to walk around the plane without a parachute, because I wasn't, I wasn't a trained skydiver. So there was no version of, there was never a version of me jumping because you can't jump and shoot. It, that wouldn't have worked anyway. Mm -hmm. But even to walk around the plane freely with the door open, you needed to be parachuted and, and trained and all that. So in order for me to do that, their only way of doing it was to harness me to the plane. 
so that there was never going to be a version of me accidentally jumping out, falling out. Um, and the harness just got a little bit longer each time, you know, like, guys, I can just, can I, I just need to go one foot further. So the harness moved or the harness got extended. Um, so by the end of it, I was able to walk all the way up to the edge of the plane, which is how I was able to get the shot of him actually jumping out. Um, and I was in heaven. I mean, oh. every time he jumped and we did multiple jumps a day. So, you know, we were there for a couple of weeks and, you know, we were up there all day. Every time he jumped, I would linger for a minute, just taking that wind and looking down at Abu Dhabi from, you know, whatever it was, 20, 25,000 feet or something, just in heaven, just in absolute heaven. But yeah, so harness, my straps, cameras, oxygen tank, it wasn't comfortable in any way, shape or form, you know, for, for as glamorous as it sounds, it really wasn't, but it was pretty epic. It was pretty but you, you, ha you have to you have to add in the story of what of the, you did ask her what happens if you fall out the back of the plane. Oh yeah, <laughs> in all of my questions, in all of my questions, maybe this was the question that made them trust me. I don't know, but in all of the questions that I brought to the skydiving team, um, they were so it got brought up so many times about trying to prevent you know preventing me falling out was was the whole goal. So. For me, the natural question was, okay, so if something goes wrong and I do fall out, what do I do? Um, to which they just sort of all kind of paused and looked at me like, yeah, okay, fair question, smart question. And actually there is something you can do that, you know, having, having never skydived, I didn't know that actually if you're gonna, if you're in that scenario, flatten out, because it will to a certain extent slow you down versus, you know, if you, make yourself sort of like a pencil and dive, you, you'll go faster. So they were like, flatten out as much as you can, flatten out. And somebody will have to dive after you. And they made sure that I had a parachute ring on the harness that I was wearing so that should they need to, they could then attach to me and tandem down with me. But <laughs> it didn't happen. It, it didn't even come close to happening. Um, but you know, That's all those questions had to be asked. intelligent out. question. <laughs> yeah, yeah that is so cool. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> See, my, my super intelligent question is, did you shoot this um, on uh, set focus or autofocus? <laughs> I think I think it was on on auto, but on um, continuous tracking because before he jumps, we walk around uh, the plane. So right, I'm okay, okay. Him, moving around with him, hiding from camera as they move around and then following him all the way out. Right, 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 right. Oh, I love this shot. Don't you love modern love technology? Imagine doing that with a Rolex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think was, you, you'd have to pick your moment with the Rolex. <laughs> yes, Which, you, you know, you would. that would have been it. I love that story. It was, it was like listening to you talk about that was like um, David feeling the mist on his face on his uh, fiddler on the roof. Yeah. Image. It yeah. was so cool. Now I want to see. Oh, I want to see. Yeah. I want to see the the screen awesome. the screen grab of this of you. There is it's so such... many. There is um. There is from because uh, behind the scenes are up there as well. There is footage of me on the plane next to the edge of the door as these guys go out past me, and I, I look mm. very happy. <laughs> I'm going to go and rewatch this scene today because I want to. Um, I want to see that shot. That exact shot. I mean, it's really beautifully that, this choreographed. Is, this is There's a, a whole this is a great, yeah. 360 in the plane this, before this he me, backs out. This to me is more powerful than the previous shot. Yeah, and TC, I'm, I'm, I reckon TC would love this more too. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's the, 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 the guy, the his better. name's Craig. The guy, the guy that you can see with the camera attached to his head. You know, they had to, we had to rehearse this on the ground beforehand with them both lying on tables so that they could understand like, okay, when we're in the air, you can't be head to head because the camera's then here. Yeah. So they would rehearse how far lower he needed to be from Tom so that he could understand his body angle without seeing what the lens is seeing. So he would rehearse knowing that, okay, if I'm an inch below 
cruise, then the, then the lens is where it should be. So he would keep yeah. himself physically. And I mean, as I said, you know, he, he does a whole 360 and he does it all backwards because he is the lens and jumps out the plane backwards. So he I mean, runs and then swings around? Is that right? So there's there's a whole dialogue that takes place between um, the actors in the plane. And then as Tom walks out and jumps, Craig is walking backwards with him and jumps first. So it's sort of, you know, like, as you can see, he kind of, and the, and the guy with the blue helmet behind that is, yeah. is, he's not guiding, he's not physically touching him, but he is there watching where Craig is walking backwards as a safety precaution. So if, right, so if he Craig is looks like backwards. he's going to fall or something's going to happen, then he steps in to help. But through that, the whole thing, Craig is going backwards, steps off backwards, and Tom follows him out. Just love yeah. it. Just if you love yeah, it. if you rewatch that scene, knowing that you it gives that whole moment of coming out of the plane a, a different perspective. It's incredible. Oh. I love a big film set, and this is one right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Beautiful. this is one of the scenes I had spent from like seven thirty in the morning on the rock. Yeah, uh, further <laughs> down the river, and it was Tom piloting the front helicopter. Mark Wolf in the other one, and what's his name? Um, we're sort of shooting out the back door, but what happened was we got landed on the rock in the in the river. Camera crew, New Zealand camera crew, and myself. We were waiting for them to fly up through a canyon past us. Then they flew up, and the helicopter to land up, to land us on the rock could not actually physically land. So you could just put his front skid on the rock and then you yeah. jump in with your gear. So I got a call. You know, we, we'd done our scene and we were waiting there all the way off this rock because you've got Roaring River either side. So I got a, a radio that comes over says, D David ready, we need him up the other end. And it's kind of getting now. So I had to leave the camera crew behind and I do camera crew, helicopter down I jumped in, whisked up the river, and then they put me on this jet boat. They offered me a place on the jet boat you see in the shop. And they explained to me what the shop is that Tom is going to come up through this canyon. The canyon is pretty narrow. And I said, I, I don't want, that jet boat is going to be approaching them and fly underneath them. I said, I don't want to be on that jet boat. I'd rather be back on the other jet boat that jet boat and the helicopters yeah because to me it's the kind of i got them just chasing on each other on the other shot yeah. but to me to get that how it was behind the scene shot was way more important and, I, and, in and fact, I asked the another shot another piece of the shot where i cropped that out and i got the, two of the reflections of the lights in the water coming so i got that shot and this shot yeah. yeah, exactly. And, you know, I mean, behind the scenes shots are so important now. It, you know, people want to, you know, before I think the filmmakers used to hide the behind the mm. scenes and now they want to show, yeah. yeah, they want to show how, what has gone into getting these extraordinary um, I mean, it's a movie of its own to yeah. know that. <laughs> when I started yeah. this, this you, the studios did not ever behind the scenes because they wanted to spoil the magic of mm. the story and behind the scenes happened later on and then you start then it's like became really important and now it's yeah as important as, as that like getting the shot for the movie but it's yeah. you know this is, this is so much and this is so much fun to do this oh, you know, is right. but but then any 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 newbies who are listening to this or watching this know that it comes with a price firstly on this shot on day i had a cup of coffee at 30 in the morning before i was on the rock i didn't see even a bottle of water till i got in the van to go home at nine o'clock at night yeah so yeah. it ain't all easy and, and wonderfully amazing it's hard work 
is not glamorous. Effort is hugely rewarding for what you get, but be prepared to yeah. go hungry. And and also <laughs> I mean, the other the other thing which I and am, cold I am and wet. <laughs> I'm extremely grateful for, but people should know the other price you pay. And this is a very short story. When I was doing Highlander in Scotland, Shear was about hey, <clears throat> not even two years old. She could just walk. I flew from, from Fort William to Glasgow at two o'clock one morning, got the first shuttle down so I could spend the day with my family. Right? My wife picked me up at the airport, drove me home. Grandma was in the kitchen. Dea came out, threw her arms around me and cried. Mm. I walked in and Chia just looked at me and then went to her being fed by grandma. On the wall behind her was a telephone and it rang. She read back and reached out and said, Daddy. No, Daddy's standing in the doorway, sweetheart. Daddy does not live on the telephone. So Daddy was the voice on the phone. You know, you have daddy was a voice on the phone, he wasn't a real person, but you know, that was like, that right, was, you uh, still are, yeah. <laughs> still just a voice <laughs> on the phone. They just now, now, there you go. I um, I fly home for my um, when I'm working in Australia, I fly home for my um, son's hockey games, and like nice. I can fly home, I can fly back in the morning, and then literally, um, I'll be jumping in an Uber from the hockey game to go to the airport while they're, you know, while they're getting changed to drive back. And, you know, just recently I said to Hunter, oh, look, you know, daddy's got to go away. And with, you know, with what's going on at the moment, I, I, I won't be able to come back on weekends. And, you know, and he goes, oh, that's okay, daddy. I'm used to it. And it broke my heart. Yeah. I was like, you're yeah, used to it. You should matter. never be used to that. Yeah. It's like, oh. But anyway. All they, they had in, the, in England those days, like six weeks summer vacation, and they would always spend it on this. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah. As, as the other side to this. Oh, yes, let's hear. It's really, it's, it's harder for you, I think, than it is for your kid if they've grown up with it. I didn't know yeah. any different. No. And, mm. you know, credit to my mom, credit to my mom that she never – we were never given a concept of daddy's not around. He was always the voice on the phone. I mean, back then we used to get faxes every day with little drawings on them. And I knew at any point, if ever I needed you, I could call. I, there was great. never a sense of you're not there and available to me. Yeah, sure, when I turned 16, I was like pissed off like every 16 year old is that my dad's not there for my birthday. But it wasn't anything abnormal in terms of, you know, as a teenager. So. Right. I think it's harder for, for you guys as the parent because you know the difference. Yeah. And yes. you feel like you're missing yeah. things. Whereas, you know, and, and I do think that comes down to, as I said, my mom really made it feel like this was absolutely normal. Daddy is available. Um, so I've never, I haven't grown up with any kind of issue that you weren't around. Instead, I look back and I judge every year of my life by what movie set I was on, which is right, yeah, bizarre, sure. yeah. bizarre, but cool, you know. And like, that's, a, that's a really good point, too, about your mum. It's like my, my wife, Maria, she's uh, an absolutely spellbinding 10 out of 10 mummy. And um, and th that's I think that's exactly what you're saying. You know, the mummies make it really um, make it work and... It is yeah. hard <laughs> because they used to travel like you guys. They used to travel with me everywhere for like the first nine years or something. And everyone's like, oh, you know, sport will happen, friends will happen, it'll stop. Yeah. And I'm, I'm yeah, just sitting there it. thinking, <laughs> yeah, I was just sitting there thinking, of oh, course, cool. that's never going to happen. Why wouldn't someone just want to travel around the world with me? And then it's like, yeah. oh, because they have their own lives too. Yeah, <laughs> like, they, they, they it'll come back around in their sort of in their twenties. It'll come back around. You'll be cool again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, no, I mean because of the film, like you know, with David as well. It's like you know, I'll sit with Hunter and I'll go, oh, you know, I've got this film with Himsy, or I've got this, you know, Bond or whatever. And it's like, do you mind? It's like, Daddy, you have to do it. You cannot say no. And it's like, you know, because he gets flex at school. <laughs> it's like, where's your dad yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> 
so there is yeah there is that side of it as well and yeah. you know and they all make me follow them on instagram and <laughs> it's like it's hilarious yeah and, and when you come home daddy you get nice presents yep yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> A sport, I can't say no. It's like I'm the pushover. <laughs> yep, that's, that's right. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> now, this I'm is... this is bills, just for the record. He was a freaking yeah, right? tough boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, success only comes from failure. So, you know, you got to make mistakes to get to the top. Yeah. So, so this is your um, collaborations, these ones, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, all three of those are, are yeah. mix. Bit of each. Still Team James that is, mix. That is so cool. That, I, I see what you're cool. saying about, yeah, it is very cool. It oh, is fun. But it. it is fun. Oh, no, it is. It's just, it's, it's, I'm loving this whole chat, just the relationship that you guys have. And it's a bit of reassurance for me, too, to tell you the truth. And, um, it's uh, it's like a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, you know I feel like there's an element that that should be said that, and I feel really fortunate for having had this. When when I was a kid working for David and and doing his assistant work and through uni you know being his editor or his printer and all of that. I then went away in my 20s and became who I was and found my working self, which was very different from my home self. You know, at home, I'm the, I'm the baby and I'm a little sort of whatever everybody wants, go with the flow. But at work, I couldn't be that. I have to be sort of efficient. And I had gone through these sort of managerial positions in production. And, and when we came back together in, in my 30s to work together, we got to know a very different version of each other. And mm. the father-daughter yeah. thing really shifted. And after, it was sort of towards the end of Star Wars and then kind of through Rogue Nation, we, I don't want to say we didn't get along. We did. We've always been close. But we really went head to head quite a lot and, and had to readjust how we saw each other. Like all of a sudden, I, I can't even, I don't even call him dad anymore. If you heard me, I've called him, he's DJ to me now. Yeah. Because our relationship shifted, and you know, I remember, <laughs> I remember saying to him one day in the hallway, "You're useless," and him telling me, "Go, you're you're bossy." <laughs> we were both kind of realizing, like, oh, I don't know you as David James, and he didn't yeah. know me as Chia James at work. We were different people and learning each other in a different relationship, and it it kind of knocked us for a minute. It, it, it sort of ruined the father daughter. Daddy's girl mm. scenario. Yeah, um, yeah. I had to learn. And then we had <laughs> a little bit. Well, we but where we ended up, we ended up fighting through it, and and we kind of. I remember again sitting in a pub. <laughs> Clearly, this is what bonds us. Um, and and really talking about it, and kind of going, I'm I'm relearning you, and vice versa, and making the effort to do that and readjusting and kind of coming at it less about the person I thought my father was, which is a pedestal, you know, like you think your you think your parent is this sort of perfect, mm -hmm. it, not even a being, and then you don't see them as the human they are, the things they've gone through, the person that they are, you see them just as your parent. Um, and again, vice versa, he saw me as his daughter to protect, to teach rather than learn from. and. And mm. so when we both put that aside and actually kind of came at it differently, um, we had a whole different relationship. And he's, I mean, you know, he's, you're my mate more than my dad these days. So, which is yeah, lovely. I, I'm very happy yeah. for that. It's awesome. I, me, I, you me know, too. Me too. I great. like that. So, so yeah, it's an, it was an interesting, and I would say that to you knowing that, you know, your, your, if your son does take that route, like there is, it is a very different relationship. To, to be able to work together like that, especially on a movie set. I mean, we start, we're quite rude to each other when we work together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, mine just calls me fatty all the time. So, oh, okay, he's, so he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's got perfect training. <laughs> You'll do fine. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm used to it already. <laughs> you know, stinky little hockey you, player. But then you get those magic moments when you say, 
Chill, that's why I'm going to rest. <laughs> yeah. Y- yes. <laughs> I got yeah, you, yeah. DJ. You can take a nap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think mine will end up. I don't see mine being a photographer, but I, th- I think he'll be in the film industry somewhere. You know, yeah. maybe even director. I don't know. Hey, quickly, what's we're in London, Westminster. Oh yeah, uh, which is partly why I love this picture so much because it it speaks to home for me. It it feels like it could be any generation. It could be any time period if it you know. I guess the clothes are the only giveaway. Um, you know, Houses of Parliament, one of my one of the most beautiful buildings in England in the mm. background, but also central London and the size of that tree. It's what I love so much about England, the parks, the green. It's it's a city that feels like the countryside. Um, and then, yeah, the behind the scenes of it. I mean, Ian McKellen is obviously a legend and... Mm. Um, I don't know, the, 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 the crew coming in through it, and this is what we were just saying, well, we all love behind the scenes so much because for every shot that we all see used in the press, there is a story and there's people, there's individuals behind that that are what the magic, at least for me, is. Like the film yeah. crew is the reason that I'm in the film industry. You know, I, yeah. as you said, the, the niche of photography that we do is, is very specific and very special but it's not necessarily what drove me to be here. It's what I love now, but even as a kid, I wanted to be part of the crew and, and I still, I still love them most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And, and, um, uh, and it's clearly like spring or summer, isn't it? Because the leaves are on the tree, but, um, you know, like Hunty was out with me, you know, I was saying he was on set, um, working for like six weeks while I was there, but he'd come in the afternoons and he'd just sit there next to the camera operator. You know, they give him an apple box and he'd just sit there and nice. like, like I would, sit, I would want to go home and be, come on, buddy, let's go. And like, no, oh, yeah, no. I'm staying here. And he was just Taking like, such a, and we're in a, yeah, and we're in a volume room too. So it's like all this, you know, this tech that just. You know, for a kid at that age, just like suck yeah, it yeah, all yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, it's all, you know, it's it's amazing. All there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. Oh, There's your mate. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful that's image. That is Pretty so girl. She's beautiful. my muse. That is such a beautiful shot. The lighting. Is it is, isn't it? Beautiful. The, you know what? The, I don't know if I'm giving anything away telling this story, but I don't mind. I, Dune was such a lovely film for all of us involved. It was such an epic experience and we all bonded so much. And to be able to do a a film as photographer and actress with your best friend (laughs) has has its own magic. You know, like the shorthand between us in, in trying to get a still and we had our own language of things that I would say if I wanted to ask, because I I have found quite often if I openly ask an actor or actress about eyeline, Oftentimes they don't have the issue, but there's there's a crew member, an AD, somebody who then takes issue because they've heard it, which yeah. is backwards and silly. So I found it easier to have a shorthand with her. And I we I obviously won't say what it was, but I, we had certain words that I would use across the set to ask her how eyeline was. Like if you know if she was it was a little too intense, and seeing my familiar face was going to throw her off. Um, and so having that just made for such a lovely experience it just meant i could just the access and ease to be able to get my job done to the best of my ability um and you know the face like that she she makes it pretty easy um but when the film was over and we were into um i mean it's been we've finished production in 2019 so it's it's been a while but when they started to do the press campaign She's obviously a, a leading part in the film and um, they needed some some new artwork of her and some photographs. And, um, you know, she came to this shoot with, with very clear ideas of what she wanted, how she wanted to feel, um, the look we were going for. So we picked the location together and styled it together and it, it, it worked. It works. Oh, and, you, and I you can really see the relationship. You can see the relationship that you guys have too. Just, yeah. that, 
yeah. you know, the, the trust that she's got in her eyes for you is, um, you know, it's it stands out by a mile, right, David? Yeah, absolutely. It's gorgeous. Okay. It's a piece yeah. of art. Yeah. In that. Yeah, it really is. I bet she loves it too. Oh yeah! <laughs> Make I saved a, a couple of these. I saved a couple of these for down the back, buddy. Oh my gosh, Mr. Bowie, that was I have an to awesome. Say, when I was when I was putting the pictures together that David had picked out, and then picking out my own, I was like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I I mean, like, look at this. Okay, David. Okay. Where were we? We're in, we're in New Mexico, Albuquerque, Man Who Fell to Earth, directed by Nick Rogue. And i got to tell you something. None of us had any idea what this film's about. <laughs> we shot it. We had fun. Hanging out with David Bowie and, and, and the... Louis Armstrong, I think it was Louis Armstrong or Sash when he came to do a one night gig at the at the um, Nilly in Albuquerque, which is still there. And we had a front, I invited to join them at a front row table. We then spent, we went from there to the coffee shop and played with, with his, the band till four or five o'clock in the morning. Why were we dancing on the tables? And this lady who ran the coffee shop came out and said, Mr. Bowie, you the table or I'm gonna call the police. And he said, Yeah baby, <laughs> the police. I got <laughs> like, he was he, I got to say he was awesome. He usually disappeared for like two or three days. And no he couldn't be disturbed because he was sleeping. And he would go for three or four days without sleeping. But really he was just such an intense character. He was so wonderful to work with. I mean it was it was just a pleasure, but it also shows how times change because Albuquerque is like a, a one horse town, it was just a crossroads with a couple of hotels and a few buildings. And I sat there was a, a bar, the claim jumper, and I sat in there one night it was at the bar. And there was a guy sitting next to me, he said, I'm a realtor. He said, We're trying to develop this place. Do you want to buy some land? And we, we, I, said, I said, show me. And we walked to the back door of the claim jumper and it was desert to the mountains. <laughs> and he said, 100 of an acre. And I, said, I laughed. I said, you know, who would want to pay $100 an acre to live here? Don't be silly. Yeah, right. I would be a multi-billionaire by now if I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these things. I was more interested in maybe buying a second than Cadillac at the time. But... Yeah, right. Bowie, Bowie was just incredible. The whole, th you know, the whole, there was days when the unit was about 100 and odd people. You know, and on the set at any time was about 40, 40, 50 people. Right. And, and we became a family. You know, yeah. it's just, it was yeah. so close knit. I mean, Rip Torn, the actors, we, we were wrapped at night by the lake, uh, by a lake location. And we would light the camp and Rip Torn and a couple of others and myself would go pay fishing. And we'd be on the campfire, that was our evening meal. Now, <sighs> those were the days when a unit literally became a unit. You became like your yeah, right. family, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and he was just awesome. It just, I uh -huh. mean, you could do anything you asked. No, and he was so into it. So, no, it was one beautiful, wonderful, life. wonderful movie. He's a beautiful looking person. Oh, he is incredible. Mm, gorgeous what, what, what a talent. I mean, he, he started off oh. like as a copywriter to that agency in London. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, nice. that's incredible. Like. And, wow. And like music. I mean, Mommy. Honestly, yeah, I can't, you can't Mommy. follow David Bowie. You just, it doesn't even matter what the image is. <laughs> How it's do you TC, follow that? <laughs> mate. It's TC. TC what follows after say? Bowie, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. He's got uh, yes, this was, um, this was on the Mommy. You know what's really... Uh, I remember when this came out, this shot. 
It was a, a first release. It was um it was an EW um first look, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to give away See, some movie watch. magic just because I think it's that cool. This is a set that was built on a stage and it was absolutely enormous. It filled the stage. We built the whole we they built the whole tomb and it was I mean in the days of, of while CGI and green screen have become so big, it was such a pleasure to walk onto a set that they could have, they could have green screened it and they didn't. They built this absolutely epic set. Um, so yeah, I'm giving no, away that's... a little bit there, but yeah, it's great. It's very cool. <sighs> that is awesome. Yeah, it is. I yeah, do it's... like how you use your frame. I almost don't want to tell you what movie or who it is. I just want to leave it be. It's a fabulous <laughs> shot. It looks like Lawrence of Arabia. It does, doesn't it? I was just thinking that. That's so good. It's an interesting picture because it's not necessarily something that would be used as a unit still. No. But every now and then I get to shoot things that I just think are very pretty. So no, you got to. We've got to be. You have to shoot for yourself too. <laughs> that shot could yeah. be part of a post. That one was for me. That one was for me for sure. I have a massive ESO monitor in front of me. That's why I keep like studying things over here. It's definitely it's, um, better and big. <laughs> yeah, right. And this is beautiful this and big is also too. The mummy. That is this awesome. Is also yeah. The mummy. I have to give yeah. her credit. You know, obviously she's she's in the scene she gets revived so she is supposed to be at least we think she's dead in this moment and she did this take after take after take and any little movement would put ripple into that water oh, and you right, can see yeah. how still that is that is unedited that i mean is, she uh, was brilliant this is uh, annabelle annabelle wallace i mean she's absolutely brilliant like shockingly still and i mean it's like she wasn't even breathing yeah, it looks like she's like at the end of an expiration of yeah, yeah, of a breath. I mean, just amazing. incredible. I love these the shots. Crow. I mean, it's just beautiful lighting. It's just like <clears throat> that shadow. The it's a powerful, powerful image. It's like you know, someone confused who he is. It's uh, it's just yeah, yeah. Um, Russell great was great. I mean, I know he's he's. Um, I had been kind of given a, a warning that he wasn't a huge fan of stills and that I, you know, he, he might ask you to leave or not want to be photographed. Um, and I, I had a very different experience with him. He was absolutely wonderful for me. If ever there was a moment that we were lined up and he, he was ready and I was ready, but somebody else wasn't, then he would look at me and go, cheer, what do you need? Like, you know, let's use this moment. What do you want me to do? Like, let's pose for a second. He was great. He was really, really, um, really cooperative and really wonderful for me. So uh, I found him a, a joy, also a joy to watch take off, to take off, to take. Every performance was slightly different. So I, I you know, sometimes you, you, you shoot two or three takes and you get your close and you get your wide and then maybe get a little artsy and try something new. But then if they keep going, there's no reason to continue to be in the way if you don't need to, right? So I could never walk away because every take was just that little bit different. I mean, it was brilliant. It was like performance, take off, take I'll off, take. Fre was, I'll frequently yeah. sit there, just look through my viewfinder, widen out the frame, and I won't even take a frame. I'll just watch, watch the live feed. Yeah, just watch. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I've already got this. <laughs> I just want to see what happens. I, I, did, I did a special shoot with Russell on Unhinged, and when I introduced, oh, him, did you? Introduced, right? When I was introduced to him, I said, "Hi, you know my daughter, Chia." Oh my God, she's your daughter. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> 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 it was very yeah, um, fine. You know, it was easy. I loved Unhinged. I just finished uh, the film that I just finished um he was in it as well and uh he was the same same thing he was great and um he's he's actually known to be very very gracious to the crew 
and yeah. uh, he yeah, gets yeah. it. And and he was he was really lovely. And I was in his eye line a lot. And I, you know, I do my normal intro, and and he's like, no, 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 you're fine. You do whatever you want. And it's like, right. okay, cool. And um, right. and uh, yeah, he's um, he's he's incredible. What a what a powerful actor, huh? Yeah, you know, I, the the actors who who same thing, you know, I always do the introduction and say, look, if, if Island is an issue, please let me know. And I find I just did a film with Will Smith, and his response to me on a day when he was it was a very intense scene. He's tearing up. I mean, he's he's a beautiful actor, and and mm. this scene was very intense, and he's incredibly approachable. So I said to him, look. I, there is an angle of this take that is great, but it puts me in your eye line. So I totally understand, but I don't want to ask for a still because obviously the performance of it. And he was like, that's fine, be my eye line. Oh, perfect. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so I stayed, I stayed, and it was, a, it was a great angle, so I stayed put on every take and I was silent. And I remember the camera operator who saw me get in position before we rolled and he was like, you're not gonna to want to be there. And I was like, why Why not? Thinking, you know, maybe they were... Yeah, yeah, they're going to pan around, away. yeah. And I said, like, oh, oh, why not? And he said, oh, no, no, you're going to be in his eye line. You, 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 he's not going to be happy with you there. And I was like, oh, no, I asked. I'm going to be his eye line for him. <laughs> and the, the operator just looked at me like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's back gold. Out of the bio. So I've never had that before. So, um, yeah, so these actors who, who, they get it. They understand that... Yeah. You know that camera being there is is doing a job, and the the better the angle you can give it, the better it is for them. So how yeah. yeah, weird is it sometimes? So when you when you're doing that, and you know that you're clipping the eye line, but you know you, you've been given permission, and it's like staring straight through the camera, and you've got it up. It's like you don't yeah, dare move. It's like and it's like, it just looks it's yeah. all magnifying. It's like coming at you like ah, an eye line. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I suddenly find myself feeling like I have a moment of missed reality where I'm like. I did ask, right? He didn't say yes. Did, 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 did I imagine that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Oh my gosh, I love it. Ah, now, this, okay. this, Mr. James, this image here, which um, I know this isn't the actual poster, this, but it's from it a sequence, the and I have. Like, the, no, it is the actual poster. Oh well, I, but, I put the poster in anyway because I want because you didn't put it in and I wanted to have it there because this is this is the image that I am the most jealous of because I always thought that this is this is what I would love to photograph and this is what one of the reasons that I got into um, action movies because of this this um, this shot and this oh, and this poster. Okay, so that if if you look obviously. The background's changed. Yeah. But the, 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 this, this whole shot was in a valley in New Zealand. Yep. And the camera was on like an 80, 90 foot track on the left hand side of my frame, coming, tripping with them. There's no way I knew if I was down that where the camera angle was, I would get a brief moment of the three quarter side or side shot of Tom, who could well be disappeared with other riders on the, on the other side of the frame, right? Because there was a whole line of them. So there was a, behind me was a pretty steep hill. And I thought I was the only one there. And Tom's favorite story on this one is screaming, get out the way, David. <laughs> <laughs> my, always, like always my answer to him is, you got the reins, Tom. <laughs> I, but it always stopped about 15 feet in front of me. But I knew that that night I went back to the house I was renting. I had my big screen up. I had my, my little printer, everything. And I pulled out that center section, which is the post section. That one, right? I pulled out that center section and I took a, an A3 print into him the next morning. I said, there is what I did yesterday. That I think is the yeah. poster. And he said, you send yeah. that to one of us right now, tell <laughs> the this is the poster for the movie. And then- Oh, I love that, added the blood on it. Oh, I didn't notice that before. That is so cool. And, and again, you know, movement, movement, the movement brings this image to life. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, they're one of my favourite cool. shots of him. But you, yeah. you just stand by your guns. You know that you want the shot. You get the chance to do the shot. Yeah. I knew yeah, he totally. was going to like go up the hill. DJ, I don't know if you agree with this, but I feel like Tom has spoiled us in the sense that because he is so encouraging of us being part of these stunts, his stunt team then get on board with that and then oh, learn absolutely. to trust you. And then on the absolutely. next one, yeah. they kind of let you be where you want to be, you know, with the yes. harness, they let you go further and further. Yeah. And then you come on to another movie which doesn't have that team and the stunts are like, oh, no, no, you can't be there. You, 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 you can't go near that edge and you can't even, and they, they oh, panic because uh, they think you're like, you know, going to do something crazy. Yeah. And you're trying to explain to them what you've done <laughs> and that you know, and it's okay. That's right, exactly. I love yeah. working I love <laughs> working with the same stunt stunt team all the time. It's like, level of trust um, there. You know, like I don't do any second, the only second unit or action unit that I do is Bond, and i got to say I really love doing it. And I wouldn't mind as I, yeah. you know, get a little bit older of just concentrating on doing doing that stuff but i'm not quite quite ready now but uh but you know if it's the right project definitely it's doing what you enjoy doing yeah Yeah. you know just do what gives you the most satisfaction that's what you want to do thanks you just made my decision easier (laughs) i love that poster i love that poster and then um yeah and this uh, is now Beyonce. Oh. Beyonce. I remember this day. I wasn't allowed in the room. <laughs> yeah. That was a, I, I have a signed picture of Beyonce, of this shot, which she signed to me. It's the best photograph she's ever had. Oh, but it is gorgeous. The, the idea, yeah. this, this was shot to be a background. So it was blown up like 15, 20 feet high. And wow. the, the, the scene in the movie, is, right? It's in the scene. Yeah. yeah, it's in the movie. She comes in one side and see the Jamie Foxx comes in the other side. They meet in the middle. The cam the focus goes from to their faces, and then they drop out of frame. So it's on trios. And it's, she, she was such a treat to work with. And the lighting wanted I just one light on my face, and then the rest was bounce. I just wanted a little bounce at the bottom to light her hand and, and just down by her spinal cord, just down, down, down the spine, just down that. Yeah. Just the back I wanted. And it was all, you know, it's just one light and uh, There you go. That's back, you your, um, that's back to your, that's back to your lessons with, with, <laughs> that was just, she was that's so the, adorable. Oh, that's back to your um, lessons with Chia too, the one light. Oh, well, yours mm-hmm. with the rolling flex. There's twelve frames, one light. Get me twelve different images. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And and this is cool. this is part of um, how I've been feeling the flow of where you're both the work has gone. You know, with the with Fallout and then June, and then there's the styles here are very <laughs> are very similar. Yeah. That's so funny. I hadn't, I That's hadn't true. connected those two. That's very oh, true. Oh, thank you. How funny. Yeah, see, you know, there's that one light and it's, it's, um, yeah. It was, it's, it's been, honestly, it's been a real treat for me to put both of your, your favorite images together. And, and it's been a journey for, for me. That's why I was saying to you that I need a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, no, that's good. No, that's I'm glad so that we. Cool. I'm glad that we got it because I didn't want to put it off any longer. But yeah, so there you go. That's a great shot. That's a. It is, isn't it? That's yeah, I love so that shot. This Such is the great thing, shot. though, about about having and and I get asked this quite often because from from the exterior, I'm seen as sort of David's mentee and protege because I've because as his daughter and becoming then a duo and then taking on and going on to stills. I, it's so hard for me to see that because I've grown up with it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I just one day got hired by David and became his assistant and then sat there with my notebook and learned everything from it. It's been infusing into me. Uh, And, and also there's a DNA level of it. You know, I, I, I guess I do to a certain extent see things the way he sees things. And then also 
the opposite. So it's it's really interesting to have somebody else point those things out because I don't necessarily I'm not necessarily aware of it until you put them next to each other like that. And I'm like, oh my God, okay, yeah. There's yeah, genetic inheritance. There's genetic inheritance, no doubt. Yeah. It's, um, you can see it through yeah. all of it. It's like, you know, uh-huh. it's what you've picked up subliminally is, um, you know, is, is amazing. And, yeah. you know, you, you touch on it every now and again about, you know, uh, about how you got there with David. But I know from uh, my background and other people's background that, it's not easy. It's actually harder. You have to work twice as hard to get people's respect. To prove it. And, to prove um, yeah. and hat off to you because you're doing it and, you know, mm-hmm. you've really come out on your own now. It's like I'm really loving and enjoying seeing it. Yeah. This shot, come on. Okay, this 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 was a special shot. Right, we, oh, we were shoot, shooting, Yeah, we were shooting in Miami and we were – Surrounded by paparazzi, we had built black duvetyn tunnels from Tom's trailer to the set, shooting in a nightclub. And so Tom said that we need to get a first release picture today. So I had picture. one. We had the had the same guys lighting, or we, we had the theatrical lighting as well as our movie lighting from Chicago, which I worked on a long oh, time ago. Wow. Right, so I said to their guy, I said, look, what I want, I want one light behind him. So we had another room away from the set. It was like a big private room. I put black duvetyn on. I put one light, I cut a hole in black duvetyn and put that one light through it. Then I had three lights on the top which was slightly backwards, right? So I was kind of pretty much rim lighting him. He sang yep. Pour Some Sugar for Me, and he belted it out three times. Mm. The director sitting in my, I had my computer lace, lay, uh, linked up to my camera. So the director was watching that. Then Tom comes to me, we, we do one take. And Tom comes to me and said, David, I know this is against but try lighting more over the top of me. I said, why? Because I hate that. He said, why? Mm -hmm. I said, because it will light up my stomach muscles more. I said, okay. Did it. We brought the whole rig forward by six inches and let it go. And because I said to him, as long as you keep your head back more so that we don't get a shadow nose going down your chin. He yep. said, okay, you got it. And again, we did two more takes like this, and we looked at it and we picked up that image. That went out that day, went wide. Next morning, I went to my head. I had an office in the trailer, trailer land, which was opposite the disco. No paparazzi, a paparazzi mm-hmm. over by the trailers. And one of them came out and said, was that your shot? I said, yeah. And they said, well, man, it's an awesome shot. Congratulations. But do you realize what you did? I said, well, it looks like I got rid of a lot of your, your friends. He said, yep. He said, you took a $54,000 price tag off the first image of Tom Cruise, Stacey Jacks, and reduced it to zero. That's what you did. Wow. We're not even here to That's... shoot Tom. We get somebody else. Good. Good. I love that. 54000 I said, shit. $54,000. I would have to sell it myself. Yes, yeah, seriously. Yeah, gone half, <laughs> gone half to TC. Put some fuel in the jet. Made more than I made on the movie. <laughs> yeah. But no. It was, oh my you know, gosh. It was, it was an awesome shoot to do, and it, but he did not let up on his performance for the still. He let That's it so out. Good. Well, you know. Yeah, you know, we like, can come for. back to him. It's you know he gets it, and he loves that right profile too, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. I got um, my uh, my MI two poster is of that right profile. He's so cool. I love him. Honestly, I really, really like him as a person and everything. And then there you go again. See, this is why oh I threw my that God, in. This is so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not influenced by you at all. <laughs> Oops, hold on. Uh, oh. Right. 
Oh my God. Kitty Winks, you got to. Yeah, I know, right? Funny. That's so a beautiful is image, too. That's Vanessa, Vanessa Kirby from Fallout, which we shot together. Yeah. How how interesting. I love that. I know, right? that. It, it, it takes, it, do you know what? It's so not an Mission Impossible picture, which no, I think is why when we were there, when we were shooting it, it was it felt like something different in in you know in the context of, of what are quite long movie shoots and you're you're shooting quite you know all this action right and then we had this sort of really soulful beautifully lit um, singing scene and she just she looked gorgeous she just lit up oh totally 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 and look at the little uh. babies again. <laughs> Burn the beaches, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Christian Slater, and I don't know who those two little brats are. Just, just <laughs> photo little brats. Oh, yeah, photo bombers. Yeah, the little photo bombers. They did that fun, and day. they did get muddy. See everybody wearing welly boots? Those girls yeah. got muddy. Oh, yeah. I love it. Jack, this and so this is another collaboration, right? Whose photos are whose? This was technically our first poster. Yeah, right. So this the is the first, I think, right? Yeah, because on on Star Wars it was a magazine cover. On right. on Rogue Nation it was like first look images. Yeah. But I think the posters were all your images, and then then we went and did Jack Reacher, and and this was the first combined one sheet. So that was that was a really cool, you know, progression. The, the headshots are mine. The act on the bottom is cheers. Yeah. yeah. Good action cheer. Yeah. And good headshots too, David. Of course. <laughs> from the from the two top action photographers, I'll take that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh wow! Do, you, do, do I slip in there somewhere? That's pretty cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> and funny enough, no, it's good. Top, I love the it. top shot. We, we were having a camera problem. They were on a balcony looking down on the street and we're having a oh, camera right. problem. Tom, and they, said they, they stayed up there. So I ran up, got on that balcony where you could be in the shop. And I asked them to take those looks down to the street. That's where that shot was. Was that from. a single shot? The two of them together? I thought that I thought they put those two together. I didn't realize that was no, a single that shot. No, was a shot. It was two of them up there together. Oh, cool, okay. That's All great. Right. Yeah. See, I'm learning things today too. Hey, Chia, what's your um, explosion formula? I mean, it's usually, I find it's usually like um, four to six stops over ambient, right? What do you, what do, you do? Um, I, do you know what? I don't know that I have a plan. <laughs> um, on that day, that, that explosion specifically was such, because sometimes it's more cloud and the flame is in the bottom. Yeah, and I don't always, you know, I, they don't necessarily tell me that beforehand. So it's kind of a little bit of a crapshoot on the day of what that flame ball is going to look like. You know, it says on the call sheet explosion, but you don't necessarily <laughs> know quite what that means. So oftentimes it gets blown out because I'm, you know, not prepared for how bright it gets. Um, and this may, this, I yeah, I. I don't remember. But you know, the, the, the best, in all my experience, the best time of an explosion is just a second after it's blown. Yeah. Because that is when... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's when you get to lose that huge intensity of light and you get some of the exterior. That's the best Yeah, time. yeah, you get that orange that's, that's in there now. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. Because you need a little bit of blown out, but... You don't want it too blown out. And then, of no. course, if you've got no, exactly. cars flying through the air or something. And you've you got to go protect that. You know, you don't just want the explosion. You want the surroundings. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, exactly. and specifically on that, on that scene, the, it was so dark. Everything around it was so dark that it lit, it lit everything else up. So that explosion was my light source yeah. for, yeah. for him, for the car. I mean, it really, it kind of brought everything else. So I really just exposed for the explosion. Um, and then, oh, is that one and shot? A little bit lucky. Yes. Yeah, that's one shot. It was a wide shot. Oh, that's even cooler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's um, – yeah, we shot it oh, from wow. – from, so the cameras, the cameras are actually over 
Tom's shoulder. So they were shooting right. sort of um, a dirty POV from him, you know, because he, he shoots and, exp- yeah. and blows it up for the distraction. Um, so I was just, I was kind of around here to try and get it all in one frame. So because obviously for us, a lot of times, if I, if it's the back of his head, then it's <laughs> not necessarily worth it in a still. Um, so for me, I was trying to get his, his face and explosion in the same frame. Yeah. What works for them doesn't work for us. And it's like, and, and it's so, so, often. so many times it's, um, I've got, uh, there's a new poster out, um, for a film that I did called Kate. And it's sort of she's up against the wall and she's shooting I down. Saw that. But the, so yeah, cool. but the cam the camera was underneath, right? As she was shooting there. And but um you know that that, that wouldn't work for me because the, the muzzle flash is gonna <laughs> blow everything out. Well so it's like I got off on up the, against her thighs, right? <laughs> yeah, so but there was but next to it is um is all the cutters and it's like it clipped my and I at the first time I saw it, it's like, damn it, you know. It's clip. It's clipping my muzzle flash. I can't use it. And it was only one frame that we did. It was like you know, four o'clock in the morning, last shot, and uh, and ex- and exactly that. You know, what works for them quite frequently okay. won't work for us, and it's up to us to wander around and find that gold. You know, and and that's mm-hmm. a classic example of it. You know, it's a great shot. Look, and and it made it on the poster, and can't beat that. That's the ultimate. Muzzle, muzzle flashes are. Very difficult on us because they yeah. often they look like if you freeze, they look like milk flying out the end of the barrel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's always a, it's just you have to be really lucky with. It. And you get some actors that will blink every, will close their eyes every yeah, time. Right on that yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I'll go up to them and I'll actually say, "Hey, uh, you know, you're closing your eyes." If it's someone that I can <laughs> say it to, it's like, "Oh, you had your eyes closed." Now it's a really difficult thing. A lot of people do it, yeah. and then but they're conscious of it, and then you know, keep it open. And oh, uh, this, uh, see, this I love all this sort of stuff. It's great storytelling. It's awesome. Yeah, again, well, again, this is one that wouldn't necessarily translate as a publicity still for selling the, mm-hmm. the movie because it's not exactly, you know, it's not a hero shot. Um, but we, uh, the the scene was a tracking scene. So you follow him through the scene. He has this moment where he beats this guy up and, and walks in and picks up his coffee at the bar. So camera's going across and, and it is, it's one of those, okay, do I zero in on crews at the bar, which when there's two of you there to photograph things, you don't necessarily get stuck with just one angle. So David was already shooting that. But no no point in copying and doing the exact same thing because yep. the master's doing it. He's going to do it just fine. I don't need to try and do it too. So then it kind of gave me the freedom. And this is what I used to love about us getting to work together is the responsibility in that scene, the responsibility was on David. He he yeah. had the hero shot. So, all right, let me walk around and get a little artsy and get a little creative and and line this up in a way that just looks cool to me. Um, and it by chance, it wasn't intentional, but it did, did it sort of end up, um, our director, Ed Zwick, saw it and, and compared it to a Hopper painting. Um, yeah. And which that's was a huge compliment, right? I was, yeah, that was yeah, totally. Yeah. So, it is. So like, yeah, it, I, I do I love your. That. I love your framing. It's um, it's it's really interesting. It drags me through a frame to all the different little bits and pieces that I want to look mm. at. So um, you must be very proud, David. I am Aww. very very proud. Look at that. Oh, there, see, there you go. I should have put this. I should have put this next to the um, Private Ryan one because here's you using uh, using the movement and the. Uh, I don't see, know if it's because one. you know here's here, and 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 it's a it it fits with the story of the influence, right? Because I was on Saving Private Ryan. That was my summer oh. when I was twelve, oh. running around with the craft service trays giving everybody sandwiches at four o'clock and then finding anything I could do to help, whether it was David or the ADs or whoever would let me help. And I spent my summer on set watching things get blown up. And, you know, that's, that was my summer. That was my 12 year old summer. So 
yeah, to me, when I then show up on a set, and, and I find it really interesting. I don't know if it's a, a gender thing, but I walk on a set like this, and my immediate instinctual reaction is, oh, okay, how close can I get? Where can I be? Let's get dirty. This is, yes, the dirtier the better. And the response I get when I ask that, when I, you know, kind of go, hey, can I be there? The response is always like, you can't, you're going to get covered in stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And That's right. That's I, right. <laughs> it's like, a, yeah, I'm like, great. And they think I'm mad. <laughs> I think people just think I'm crazy. Um, I don't know any different. <laughs> I don't know any different. Crazy. The fun stuff. Yeah. You know, what a wonderful I, you, life after a had. take of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty it cool. Really I've been is. pretty lucky. I had to leave this to last yeah. because this is one of okay. the Gorgeous. great images of all time. And this, this, this That's is not even a movie. This still. is one of my favorite images. <laughs> The, the, it was a, it was a thing, the camera was tracking from right up to where I was almost. Right? It, it was yeah. following him out of that building behind him, tracking him across the street, and then he dives out of shot into this foxhole, this, this crater. Right? I was on the other side of the crater with my Leica. I pre-focused on him. As he drops in, I shot fifteenth of a second. As he drops in, I jumped over the edge. At the end, oh, I wow. end up. So we slide down together. I wanted the movement in the background, anything else that's flying around, to have the weapon pretty much sharp, and a few of the bullets, bullet belt sharp, was perfect for me. That was a capper shot. That was perfect. I always say. Me. For me to have to jump in the ditch with him and slide down with him, feet met at the bottom was perfect. Steadiest yep. hand in the industry. This man will shoot a fifth of a second. And it's yep. perfect, sharp every time. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I'm lucky. I'm incre it's you're the incredible. Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's the calming nerves of the whiskey, does it? <laughs> It's the uh, it's like it really is uh, just a powerful everything about it, and it's you know it looks like it's you know from the turn of the century it doesn't look like it's you know it's, it's cinematic yeah oh, amazing god. amazing yeah. amazing amazing oh my god I've had so much fun talking to you too huh. it's been um I've learnt so much and then. Uh, Oh, I love all these shots of you guys together. Oh, that's, that's the, the camera. I missed this. JJ. Yeah, JJ took that. JJ shot this. JJ did. Yeah. I mean, they took it up with him, but he cut us off at the ankle. That's a rule. You don't do that. <laughs> no, you don't. No. And in fact, I yeah, I know, right? Oh, DJ. Yeah. <laughs> Sharing ladders with me. Yeah. We we found the we found the photos. David sent them to me last night. And oh, I love these. And this one, I oh, like that oh, that's one. cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that one. Still yeah, I do it. too. And that's it. We, it. we got we got through it. It only took us eight, um, three hours. <laughs> I've only got three hours, so I have to get up again. <laughs> I know, right, you poor thing. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up quickly so you can. But I just got to say thank you to you two, and I've been and we've all we've been trying to get this together for a long time, and I'm glad <laughs> it's happened when it did. And um, it's uh, I have to say uh, the flow of our little chat is probably the best that I've had. It was just you know it's just three friends shooting the crap about photography and photos, and I, I really appreciate you guys making the time to uh, oh, to talk to me because it's just wonderful. Yeah. It was it was a lot of fun for me, and it was a lot of fun to be on this show with you. So it was like, it's awesome, and 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 with yourself, you're a great host, you're a great photographer. So thank you. You are a very good host, very good host. Thank you. To make a living. That's out very of this. cool. We have to do another five photo folio. We have to get DJ on, right? Yes, yes, that would be great. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah fun. Be... making me miss still Team James. <laughs> I know, right? Yes. Because it's a lot of fun. Where we all we all do um, five photos. It's quite fun. Maybe we could just do it. We'll give it a little. Give it a couple of months, and then the three of us just do a five photo yeah. and okay. keep it down. And we just tell our own stories. How about that? Love it. There'll be different that. photos every time. Yeah. Love all it. Right. Um, no, thank you so much, you two. It's um, uh, it, it's been an eye opener for me, and it's been a bit of a journey for all of us. I think we're all like, um, like, oh wow, and just remembering photos yeah. and it's stories quite behind emotional. them. I know, right? Yeah. So there you go. I'm, I'm never yeah. gonna jump in my pool and have a glass of wine with it. I have to say, um, the, this this is a first for DJ and I as as still to yeah. James to get to do this together. So thank you for having us. It's really cool. Yeah, I um, I agree. It's so awesome. Oh, my it's, pleasure. It was fun. And, and in the early days when we were planning this, Cheer and I thought that would would just get you on, and then I'd bring her in as a surprise. Party crasher. But, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like party crasher. So but I think it actually. Yeah, yeah, and I think it actually worked better like this because, um, you know, everyone was telling stories and some of the stories that, you know, you guys hadn't even shared and um, and so it was uh, so it was, it was really good and anyone that's watching this is going to um, love it and it's a great inspiration and that's really what this is about is, you know, inspiring the, 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 the younger or the, even the older that are just getting into still photography um of what it means to us and the common theme is uh how much we love what we do and how much yeah. we know that we you don't you continue to get better as as it goes on and as you said if you're not getting better quit it just get out leave yeah. it to someone else yeah. and just I, mean, I, I give you a last line the premier gave me it was a huge impact on my life after he torn up all my photographs he said you're not here to make my movie. You're here to sell it. Oh. And that was great advice. And that is the perfect way to end. Yes. Love you guys. Okay, Thank guys. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye, Good night. Bye. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have fun at work. Well, team, how was that? I don't know whether I'm going to do this a two-parter or uh, – just leave it as a single and you can watch it when you're free. But, oh, what a, uh, what a chat with, with um, Cheer and David and, you know, just inspires me and, you know, I'm in the middle area of my career and, you know, David's retired now but still can't drop the cameras and Cheer's right at the peak and on the way up. So got to say, love it. Thanks for watching and uh, if you get a chance, do the bell and um, so you can uh, get notified and uh, subscribe and come and visit my Insta and also, you know, David's and Cheers. But um, it was a – I had so much fun and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Okay, see you later.